call the meeting to order of the June 23rd, 2016 Planning Commission meeting. I want to thank everybody for coming down. Hopefully the air conditioner won't go out uh, in here, so keep it cool in here. Um, first, uh, item B is the adoption of the agenda. Is every, have all the commissioners reviewed the agenda? Any corrections, additions, deletions? Do I hear a motion? Motion and a second. second. Any other discussion? All in favor of adopting the agenda? Say aye. aye. Ayes have it. The agenda is adopted. Now we're on to item C, which is the approval of the May 26, 2016 minutes. Has everyone had a chance to review those? Any corrections? All right. Is there a motion? Motion. Motion and a second. Any other discussion? All in favor? Say aye. aye. Opposed? No. Ayes have it. The minutes have been adopted. Now we're on to item D, recognition of council members. I saw several. Uh, I was going to start with uh, Councilman Mendez. You want to speak or do you want to wait till the item is up? Come on up. Thank you for being here today with us. Thanks very much. Happy to be here. Um, I'll, I'll wait till the item's called. Okay. Thank you, Councilman. Thanks. Uh, I saw Councilman Sledge. Go ahead. Thank you, Commissioners. Um, I wanted to know there are two items on there, well, actually three, but one is under the same number, number 12 A and B. Um, you will see that as a community plan change and then a rezoning for the 12th and Wedgwood properties. Many of you are familiar, but I want to make sure you knew this is the property that is owned by Metro that um, is proposed to do workforce housing upon. Uh, we've had several community meetings on this property. Um, everyone who I've spoken with it seems to be in agreement. We've worked very diligently with the neighborhood and the developer on it. I believe it is still on your consent calendar, but I did not want to take anything for granted. Um, I did want to let you know that we've had a very healthy process and community members, quite frankly, have made this project um, even better than when it started out. Um, the other item that I believe is still on consent is 21. Um, it is a it is a UDO amendment on Clayton Avenue. Um, I've spoken with residents on that item as well, and everyone who has been involved in there has agreed um, that that is an acceptable amendment. So thank you again for your service. I appreciate the time. Thank you, Councilman. Councilman Ager, I saw you as well. Welcome. Well, thank you. Uh, I'm on. I'm number 25 on the consent agenda at this time, so I'll just wait till it comes up. This is rezoning property from IG to IR, and the Elk area it used to be the old Dupont property. Excellent. Any other council members? I didn't see any any others. Okay. All right. Well, thank you for coming down today. We'll go to item E, items for deferral withdrawal. Mr. Bob. Yes, there are several items for deferral or withdrawal, starting with item number one. This is case number uh, 2016 SP-027-001. This is a request to rezone from R8 to SP zoning for property located at 11 Vaughn, Vaughn's Gap Road to permit up to 64 residential units and a recreational center and personal care services facility. Staff recommends to defer indefinitely. Next item is item number two, case 2016 SP-033-001. This is a request to rezone from R8 to SP zoning to permit up to 32 residential units for properties located on Laramie Avenue and Noshawood Lane. Staff recommends to defer to the July 14th uh, Planning Commission meeting. Next item is item 4A, case 2005P-008-007. This is a request to amend the Harpeth Village PUD district for properties located at 7725 Old Harding Pike and Temple Road unnumbered. And staff recommendation is to defer indefinitely. The associated case with that PUD is case Item, item number 4B, case 2015Z-096PR-001. This is a request to rezone from RS40 to RM6 zoning for property located at 7725 uh, Old Harding <coughs> Pike. And staff recommendation is to defer indefinitely. Next item is item 7, case 2016Z-044PR-001. This is a request to rezone from R10 to CS zoning for property, uh, for a portion of property located at 981 Murfreesboro Pike. Staff recommendation is to defer to the July 14th Planning Commission meeting. 
Next item is item 8, case 2016Z-052PR-001. And this is a request to rezone from uh, CN, CS, OR20, RS10, OL, RS5 to RM40A uh, for various properties located along Kingston Street, Queen Avenue, Duke Street, Prin Prince Avenue, East Trinity Lane, and Sultana Avenue. Staff recommendation is to defer to the July 14th Planning Commission meeting. And item number nine is case 2016Z-053PR-001. This is a request to rezone from OR20 and R6 to MULA zoning for properties located on Ocala Avenue and Lenox Avenue. Staff recommendation is to defer to the July 14th Planning Commission meeting. Next item on the deferral list is item 10A, case 2016 CP-007-001. This is a request to amend the West Nashville Community Plan to apply a special policy to support se uh, seven stories as, a, as viewed from the interstate but limited to a maximum of four stories visible from the remainder of the T4 neighborhood evolving policy area. Staff recommendation is to defer to the July 14th Planning Commission meeting. The associated zone change with that is item 10B, case 2016 SP-004-001. This is a request to rezone from R6 to SP, zoning for various properties located along 33rd Avenue North and 35th Avenue North, uh, Trevor Street and Delaware Avenue to permit a residential development. Staff recommendation is to defer to the July 14th Planning Commission meeting. Next item, item 11A, case 2016 CP-007-003. This is a request to amend the West Nashville Community Plan by removing the existing special policy and replacing it with a new special policy. Staff recommendation is to withdraw at the request of the applicant. And I will note on that item that Commissioner Blackshear is recusing herself. The associated zone change with that case is 11B, case 2016 SP-042-001. This is a request to rezone from RS80 and SP zoning for properties located at 6210, 6214, 6218, 6222 Harding Pike and Highway 70 unnumbered to permit up to 26 residential units. Staff recommendation is to withdraw at the request of the applicant, and I will note that Commissioner Blackshear is recusing herself on item 11B as well. Next item is item 14, case 2016Z-011TX-001 on page 6 of your agenda. This is a request to amend section 17.40.120 of the Metro Zoning Code pertaining to the determination of inactivity on a planned unit development. Staff recommendation is to defer to the July 14th Planning Commission meeting. Next item is item 17, case 2016S-115-001. This is uh, a request for final plat approval to remove the reserve parcel status and to create one lot for property located at 117 Haynes Park Drive. Staff recommend, recommends to defer to the July 14th Planning Commission meeting. Next item on the deferral list is item 18, case 2016S-121-001. This is a request for final plat approval to create three lots on property located at 926 Snow Avenue. Staff recommends to defer indefinitely. And last item on the deferral list is item number 19, case 2005P-030-007. This is a request to revise the preliminary plan for a portion of the PUD overlay district for property located at Stones River Road unnumber, unnumbered to permit 121 residential units located in phase two uh, where 152 townhomes were previously approved and staff recommends to defer to the July 14th planning commission meeting. Those are all the deferral and withdrawal items. Thank you, Bob. <clears throat> so let's, so we have the correct list. Um, it'll be items for deferral or withdrawal are items number one, two, 4A, 4B, 7, 8, 9, 10A, 10B, 11A, 11B, 14, 17, 
18 and 19. You've heard, correct. Is that correct? Yes. Commissioners, you've heard the items were defer withdrawal. Is there a motion? And a second. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. All opposed? No? <laughs> Ayes have it. Those items will be withdrawn or deferred. Item F, the consent. Bob? Okay, before I get to the consent agenda, as information for our audience, if you are not satisfied with the decision made by the Planning Commission today, you may appeal the decision by petitioning for a writ of cert with the Davidson County Chancery or, Cir or Circuit Court. Your appeal must be filed within 60 days of the date of entry of the Planning Commission's decision. To ensure that your appeal is filed in a timely manner and that all procedural requirements have been met, please be advised that you should contact independent legal counsel. And as notice to the public, items on the consent agenda will be voted on at a single time. No individual public hearing will be held, nor will the commission debate these items unless a member of the audience or the commission requests that the item be removed from the consent agenda. So I, as I read the following items into the record, please raise your hand if you'd like this item removed from the consent agenda. Starting with item number three, case 2016 SP-043-001. This is a request to rezone from RS 7.5 to SP zoning for properties located on Tony Road, Old Matthews Road, and West Trinity Lane to permit a mix, mixed use development. Staff recommendation is to approve with conditions and disapprove without all conditions. And I will note on item three, Commissioner Blackshear is recusing herself. And next item is item six, case 2003. UD-003-003, this is the, the Ridgeview UDO. This is a request to amend a portion of the Ridgeview Urban Design Overlay District for property located at Bell Road Unnumbered to permit a uh, mixed use development with multifamily and elementary school and um, some with multifamily and an elementary school. Staff recommends to approve with conditions and disapprove without all conditions. Next item is item 12A, case 2016 CP-010-002. This is a request to amend the Green Hills Midtown Community Plan by changing the community character policy from T4 Civic, T4 Open Space, and T4 Neighborhood Maintenance to T4 uh, Neighborhood Evolving, and staff recommends approval. Next item, the associated zone change is item 12B, Case 2016 SP-045-001. This is a request to rezone from RM20 to SP zoning for properties located at 1440 and 1500 12th Avenue South and Wedgwood Avenue unnumbered to permit a maximum of 150 multifamily units. Staff recommendation is to approve with conditions and disapprove without all conditions if the associated plan amendment is approved. If the plan amendment is not approved, then staff would recommend disapproval. Item number 13 is 2016 Z-010TX-001. This is a request to amend section 17.40.120 and 1740.106 of the Metro Zoning Code pertaining to the inact inactivity of plan unit developments and specific plans. Staff recommends approval. Next item on the consent agenda is item 20. 20. This is case 2014Z-049PR-001. This is a request to rezone from AR2A um, to IWD zoning for property located at 3920 Stewart's Lane. Staff recommends approval, and I will note that Commissioner Blackshear is recusing herself on item 20. Next item is item 21. Case 2014 UD-001-004. This is a request for a site-specific modification to the garage location standards of the Clayton Avenue Urban Design Overlay for property located at 832 Clayton Avenue to permit a garage located in front of the front facade of the principal structure on a dwelling unit, and staff recommends approval with conditions. Next item is item 24. Case 2016Z-062PR-001. This is a request to rezone from R6 to RS7.5 zoning for various properties located along Burgess Avenue, Carbet Lane, Orlando Avenue, Patina Circle, and Rural Avenue. 
staff recommendation is to approve with a substitute ordinance. Next item is item 20. Pardon me. Item 24. Mm -hmm. Bob, um, ma'am, are you are you for the? I'm against it. Okay. Um, and there are so you're asking to pull the yes. that particular from the consent agenda? Yes. Okay. Thank you. And there are a handful of um, property owners who feel the exact same way that thought we were under the. Okay. So we'll pull it and then you, you can speak. Thank you, ma'am. I appreciate it. Okay. So item 24 is not on the consent. Item 25. Case uh, number 2016Z 063PR 001. This is a request to rezone from IG to IR zoning for various properties located along Burnett Road, Swinging Bridge Road, Industrial Drive, and Old Hickory Boulevard. Staff recommendation is to approve. And then under other business, item 30 is to accept the director's report and approve administrative items. And I'll go back and read through those those items that are on consent, starting with item item 3, 6, 12A, 12B, 13, uh, 20, 21, 25, and 30. All right. So you've heard the items. Let's go over them one more time for the commissioners and the public, which is items for consent is items 3, item 6, 12A, 12B, 13, 20, 21, 25, and 30. Is that correct? All right. We'll need a motion to adopt the consent agenda. There's been a motion and a second. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Ayes have it. The consent agenda has been adopted. So that leaves us with these items to be considered. Bob, you might have to help me here real quick, but to make sure it's 5A, 5B, 15, 16, 22, 23, 24, and 26. That's right. Is that correct? Yes. All right. So every other item has been either on the deferred list or the consent agenda items have been adopted. And so now we'll go back to um, recognizing some of the council members. If everybody could, if they don't have business, we'll, could, we'll let everybody kind of leave. Thank you. All right, so I saw Council Lady Johnson. Is she still here or is she? She's in the back. Council Lady, would you like to? Without objection, we'll go back to recognizing council members. Council Lady, welcome. We also have our school board member, Mr. Will Pinkston. <laughs> welcome to the Planning Commission. Thank you, Chairman Atkins, Secretary Sloan, esteemed members of the commission. I'm Council Lady Karen Johnson, District 29, 2928 Moss Spring Drive, Antioch 37013. And I have with me here also elected official school board member for the area, um, Will Pinkston. And uh, we are both here in support of item number 22, 2016 UD. 001001. And I ask that you support staff recommendation to approve. Uh, this particular UDO is not uh, restrictive in any way. It uh, increases the value of this corridor and protects the interests of the business owners as well as the residents in the area. Also, uh, the UDO promotes pedestrian friendly development and uh, better vehicular uh, circulation. I have school board member uh, Will Pinkston here, who, and also who was here was David Prophet, who, was over, who is over um, construction and design for Metro Nashville Public Schools. And uh, he would also like to share words of support for this UDO. 
Thank you, Council Lady Johnson. Uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission, thank you for giving me a couple of minutes to speak to this. I uh, represent South and Southeast Nashville on the school board, and among uh, the many honors that I have is representing UNA Elementary School, which would be included in this, in this UDO. Uh, UNA is a very cool school, 800 kids, and we think that uh, it would fit nicely under this urban design overlay that the UDO would make it safer. Uh, for the students and the faculty in the area uh, with, as Council Lady uh, Johnson suggested, increased pedestrian opportunities and, and other uh, enhancements. And we think that would help the school, we would help the surrounding community. And as uh, the school board member representing that part of town, I'm fully in support of that and I appreciate Council Lady Johnson's leadership. Thank you. Thank you for coming down. Mm -hmm. Ms. Pinks. With that, I just end again with uh, asking for your approval. Um, we want to include all parcels. Um, regardless if there's any one objection or what have you, because we feel like it's in the best interest of everyone. Both Public Works and uh, the school system have signed off on this project. It will be a contiguous project with the other end of Murfreesboro Road, so the entire corridor would be consistent. So I appreciate your uh, consideration. Thank you. Thank you all for coming down. I really appreciate it. I saw some other council members, and first I saw Councilman Davis. You want to come up, or you want to wait until your items. items come up, or you have several today? For for majority of them, I'm going to wait till it's our turn. But there's one I must have you focus on because it's a very important one. All of them are important, but this one particularly, this is the one I have that's disapproved by the staff, and that is the one that's on Cherokee and Jones. Um, Which, hold on one second, Council, let's find what number. I believe it's number 16. 26, okay. Number 26. Now, that's kind of weird because part of that is in a neighborhood maintenance and a neighborhood evolving area. Now, two things. I have community members here in support. I have none against that are here for this particular, for this particular bill on Cherokee and Jones. Okay. Now, this bill is very important because number one, it's helping some of my regular citizens uh, a, for one, subdivide their property. They'll come up here and they'll be speaking. And also, I'm getting rid of a trailer park that is abandoned, that has drug addicts and drug dealers living in it. Um, um, Chairman Sloan, I've, I've, please forgive me, sir. This is the video where I brought to your office and showed you the activity that's happening in that trailer park. And if you disapprove, I still love you but I'm going to insist on this passage. I've been taking council members over to see this trailer park and to see the other stores along this corridor, along Jones and Chickasaw. And you know, if you feel, if you disapprove it, I understand, but I'm going to insist on this passage and my neighborhood's people are here to, to speak in support and I'll have more lined up on July 5th for a public hearing at council in support. Um, this area is very blighted and I don't understand why part of this is in the maintenance. It also has some industrial around it. And as of right now, I don't think we have time for a policy amendment, but I understand your decision. You must follow your rules, but I will be asking for 27 votes and I will be continuing to bring my colleagues to see this trailer park and the other dilapidated and blighted places along this corridor of Jones. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. And I saw Councilman Hastings in the, is he still? Oh, he left. Oh, he left. Okay. All right. He was on the consent. Perfect. All right. So we are on items to be considered, uh, which is item G of the agenda. And we'll start with 5A presentation. Okay. I'll be presenting 5A and 5B together, uh, but they will need to have separate recommendations and also there will only be one public hearing. So this is a request in the Madison area. It's to amend a planned unit development and rezone property that is proposed to be added within the planned unit development. The uh, properties are outlined in red. Um, again, this will let, the PUD amendment will add land and increase the number of units in the overall PUD. The area to be 
added into the PUD is highlighted in yellow. It's approximately nine and a half acres. It would go from single family residential to multifamily. Staff is recommending approval with conditions and disapproval without all conditions for 5A and 5B, approve if the proposed PUD amendment is approved and disapprove if the PUD amendment is not approved. This is a view of the site. The area to be added along the interstate is vacant. The existing zoning uh, for the, for the um, PUD is RM9, and then the area to be rezoned is RS20. This is the overall PUD boundary that was approved in 1985. It includes multifamily as well as seven single family lots. This impacts only the multifamily part portion of the PUD. This is the proposed plan. Um, the existing plan that was approved in 85 was for 412 units. They're asking to add 151 units, which would bring the total up to 563. Um, the area to be added is at the top, uh, which includes four new buildings. The rest of the buildings are infill uh, within the existing development. I know these are kind of hard to see. Sorry, they're a little darker. Um, so here, here, and here, and here. This is in the Madison Community Plan. The policy includes conservation and suburban neighborhood maintenance. The converse, conservation uh, is along a creek that's at the back of the property. It's not really part of the amendment, but it, it croaches into a small portion at the top. Um, suburban neighborhood maintenance supports all types of residential. It does recognize some change, but generally development should be consistent with the overall development pattern. Staff finds that this is consistent with the policy as it proposes um, infill within a multifamily development that exists today in a similar fashion and is not, does not really relate to any other um, area around it. Conclusion, staff is recommending approval with conditions and disapproval without all conditions of 5A and approve the proposed PUD amendment, I'm sorry, and 5B, approve with proposed PUD amendment is approved and the disapprove with the PUD amendment is not approved. All right, thank you, sir. Uh, this item is now open for public hearing. Uh, the applicant, come on up. You've got 10 minutes. You can reserve two minutes of that time for your rebuttal. Okay, I'm thank Roy you. Dale, uh, CEO of Dale & Associates Incorporated, 516 Heather Place. We represent the applicant on this proposal. As this was a consent item, didn't probably think that we would be speaking, but I think there's one neighbor here that wants to speak. So I'll just reserve two minutes, which is all it's going to take for me. I'll just use it as rebuttal. We'll hear from the neighbor first. Thank you, sir. Uh, any audience members wishing to speak in support of the project? Anyone wishing to speak in opposition? Please come to the microphone. <coughs> state your name. You'll have two minutes. Thank you for coming today. You need um, to state your name and your address. Thank you. Ernestine Quatcher, 1229 Lishy Avenue. Uh, this is 2016SP-047-001. I oppose it. I'm not going to move for the uh, fifth time. That's a different case, ma'am. Uh, this, this, this item is on uh, right now. Oh. 67, 8, but we'll let you I'm know sorry. when that one comes up. Sorry about that, Scott. Sorry. It's okay. And which item is that so she knows? Which, she, which item is she here for? No, I'm just reading the head. I'm sorry. All right. Thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. Um, my name is Pamela Witt. My property address is 901 Hamblin Drive. Um, I've lived there for about eight years. Um, I'm, I know a lot of this is business, but to me it's personal. This is my home. I'm a single mother. I'm raising a 10-year-old child in the city, and I grew up a city girl. We have coyotes. We have deer. We have turkeys. We have everything you can imagine in my backyard that I have been able to give my child within my capabilities. Graycroft and Gray Book Apartments, I hold nothing against them. My mother has worked for them for years since I was in high school, and I understand progress. I also understand what it's going to cost me and my son. We're not going to have our privacy in our backyard. We're not going to have our wildlife. We're not going to have our creeks to play in. And my child is not going to grow up like his mother grew up in the country. It's personal. And I understand completely progress. I work in the real estate industry. I understand it's going to happen. But 
I do want to be heard. I want to speak on behalf of my son. I want to speak on behalf of my neighbors. Um, as a single mother, I don't want more of these apartments in my backyard. I have helped my mother work. I have missed a shooting by 60 seconds. Everybody wanted to know where I was. I just happened to be in the wrong place at the right time or the right place at the wrong time. The, the people that come from those apartments, even though my mom works there, I hear what happens there. I know what happens there. It's, yes, it is, it's, it's you can see the rooftops from my house, but they're not in my backyard. I don't know what else to say. It's, I, I understand it's progress. I understand, thank you for being respectful to me. Ma'am, you thank need you. to address the chair, thank you. Yes, I'm sorry. No, you're he, fine. He, he, sh he has shown me respect and I would, I will tell y'all, he, he showed me respect. He answered my questions. This is, this is a very personal thing for me. Thank you very much. Anyone else wishing to speak in opposition? The applicant will have two minutes for rebuttal. I appreciate it very much. I mean, I just speak with her. Uh, the good thing about the plan is this, this is about 70 acres. There's a huge amount of open space or actually a, a wooded space that would be between her property and the adjacent houses. She backs up to a tributary, which will not be disturbed. It's not gonna be crossed, not gonna be touched in any way. As a matter of fact, we're working with greenways to give them an easement through there. So there can be a greenway trail in the future. Uh, in addition to the building of the units, they're gonna actually do renovations in here. They're gonna provide more connectivity, walkable connectivity. It provides a variety of housing type. It provides affordable housing. I think it has a lot of positive things. I understand adjacent property owners, I understand their concerns, but I think in her case, much of the open space is gonna remain. A lot of the wildlife will remain. The creeks will remain. And if anything, the fact that they're investing more money into this facility will probably have an effect on the tenants that are there and perhaps you know upgrade or, or change the dynamics of who's actually living there. So it, again, it's, a, a, it's diverse housing, it's walkable, uh, it's pro providing greenways, and it's recommended approval by Planning Commission staff. So I would hope that you would support that. Thank you. Thank you, sir. We'll declare the public hearing closed and we'll start with commissioners. Chairman? I don't really have any other comments other than what was presented by the staff and I, uh, I can support this as it was presented. Commissioner? Actually, I'm gonna defer for a minute and see if anybody else has any questions. I don't have any questions this time. And Dad, I, I, I agree with uh, staff recommendation. Councilwoman? I did have a question. In one of the conditions, it said if sidewalks are required to be constructed, I'd like to know if sidewalks are required to be constructed. Sidewalks would be required under um, the zoning code. Great. I think that's I think that's important for walkability. And then secondly, I'm uh, my eyes are not good enough to tell from this drawing or my tiny little map on my phone where where the green space is. If if we could just get a little bit more, either a map that shows that or a better explanation so we could understand where this is in relation to the properties with concern. Okay, um, the person that was speaking earlier was talking about this area. So there's not a street connection. So there's a 200 foot TVA easement that runs through here. So you have at least 200 feet from this point to this point. And then the stream is here, um, which would also not be disturbed. So you have over 200 feet from the back of these lots to where the actual development could occur. Okay. Thank you. I, th I think given that, that, it looks like there is a fair amount of green space being preserved in a connection to the greenway. Um, and it seems like it can be, be something I could support. Thank you. Commissioner? Commissioner? No other? All right. Any motion? Motion to approve? Motion to approve the staff recommendations. There's been a motion to approve staff recommendations. Is there a second? Second. Second. Any other discussion? All in favor? Staff recommendation? Aye. Say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Ayes have it. 5A and 5B are adopted. Item 15.
15. Item 15. Let me include myself in this one. Thank you, Chairman. Financial interest. We're on item 15, yes? Yes. This is item 15 on the agenda, Lishi's Corners SP. Uh, this is a request to rezone from CN, RS5, and SPR to SPMU to allow for uses permitted under the MULA zoning district, except alternative financial services for properties located along Lishi Avenue on approximately 1.97 acres. Staff recommendation is to approve with conditions and disapprove without all conditions. The current zoning is RS5, CN, and SPR. The policy is T4 Urban Neighborhood Center. This policy is intended to preserve, enhance, and create urban neighborhood centers that serve urban neighborhoods that are generally within a five minute walk. T4 Neighborhood Center. Areas are pedestrian friendly areas generally located at intersections of urban streets that contain commercial, mixed use, residential, and institutional land uses. This request is consistent with policy as it would create a neighborhood center that would serve urban neighborhoods. Generally, intensity is placed at the edges of the T4 urban neighborhood center, not exceeding the four corners of the intersections of two prominent streets, and allowing for commercial, mixed use, residential, and institutional land uses. This proposal achieves this intent as this site is located at the four corners of two streets. This request would allow for a variety of uses to be introduced with appropriate design standards. This is a regulatory SP, uh, and there are design standards included uh, that would facilitate a pedestrian-oriented design in the event these properties were to redevelop. Uh, they include a build-to zone, enhancement of the pedestrian network to major and collector street plan standards, uh, and vehicular access would be restricted to existing alleys. Uh, this application achieves two critical planning goals, including creates walkable neighborhoods and supports infill development. As this request is consistent with policy, staff recommendation is to approve with conditions and disapprove without all conditions. All right, we'll declare the public hearing open. The applicant has 10 minutes. Two minutes for rebuttal. Okay. Chairman, as before, this was a consent item. Uh, I'll probably just reserve my two minutes. Um, this is a, a pretty emerging area. I know Councilman Davis has worked very hard in this area. He'll have a lot more to add than I could possibly add as far as his outreach to the community. So I'll just uh, sit down. I'll hold two minutes if necessary, and I'll come back. Thank you, sir. And the applicant, uh, Councilman, you want to go ahead? Anyone wishing to speak in support? Um, Councilman Scott Davis, um, speaking in support, um, the area in question is where the Douglas Market is located. Um, good or bad, you know, Douglas Market has seen some better days. Um, the applicant, his intent, and he's been communicating with um, a lot of our local folks, um, wanting to turn in the commercial space into a grocery store, because we're both, because my district and a few others close by, we're missing the neighborhood market there when Walmart shut that down not too long ago. Um, the proposed person to run the grocery store at the bottom of the Douglas Market would be Cedric, um, who is uh, from the neighborhood, who lives in the neighborhood and has a restaurant, Little C's, which is on the corner of Jones. And I wanted Cedric to run the market because A, I wanted to make sure that my seniors that walk through that market, A, will be able to still get milk and cheese and eggs at a regular rate instead of at an increased rate because when these urban markets come in sometimes, the rates of, of normal stuff just go skyrocketing. So I had a commitment with the applicant to work with someone like him in order so we can put a grocery store in there that can serve the community. Um, more importantly, we're trying to figure out ways to keep something there, like the church has volunteered some refrigeration. If we're allowed by code, we can probably put on the adjacent property that's being rezoned, which would, A, could be used for overflow parking, but to put like a, when I say trailer, I don't mean like a permanent standing trailer there, but something that could have refrigeration that could still sell um, the milk and other needs that my communities are needing until the Douglas Market 
and the um, apartments on top are built on that structure. So we're trying to work out something now where those services can be continued to service the members of my community. Because I know when I'm talking to the neighbors across the street, and this was the main concern, being able to buy basic grocery needs um, there that's at that spot, even, even, even when it's under construction, because of the lack of the Walmart neighborhood market. And also, we added the, um, the other corner parcels because, you know, also, once again, everybody gets afraid of parking, so we're going to try to have more than we need. But also, I wanted to include some of the adjacent property there in order for other people to have opportunities to do commercial businesses along that corridor also. Thank you, Councilman. Anyone else wishing to speak in support? Anyone wishing to speak in opposition? Ma'am, I think it's... You're here to speak in opposition. Please come to the microphone, state your name and your address, and thank you for coming today. Sorry about that. My name is Ernestine Quartier. I live at 1229 Lishy Avenue, and um, I am against it. I have moved in my life uh, four times for revitalization, and right now at this age, I'm kind of sick of it. I lived at the corner of Fifth and Main, which was the old How Howerton Street. Um, then we moved, uh, the interstate took that Ellerton Parkway. We moved to Granada Avenue here again, Ellerton Parkway took the house. On North 5th, that house was torn down and I was supposed to get it uh, because it was condemned. I was supposed to have my house rebuilt back there. It was torn down and rebuilt and given to someone else and I'm living in the house that I'm living in now for uh, almost 40 years. And then I see this plan that's coming up. You know, my brother just passed in my house the 29th of last month, 29th of May. My house is precious to me. Do what you want to do, but H, no, I would not go. Thank you, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Good afternoon. Respect to all of you, my name is Lisa Spells. I reside at 611 North 5th Street. My major concerns about this redevelopment rezoning idea, right now it is an idea, is that parking is always a problem. When talking with the police department, the fire department, and EMS teams, the growth density and population, the greater the growth, the greater the density, the higher the risk of crime, the higher the risk to our officers, the higher the risk to our communities. I am not a resident in that area. However, it does have an impact on me. We are not in a food desert. So yes, more grocery stores, great. Yes, more business is wonderful. Growth is great. It is fabulous. But when there's an invasion on the privacy and the health, safety, and welfare of the residents who live there, if it appears that we're ousting those individuals who cannot have affordable housing anywhere else, then we need to reconsider some of our choices. Let me reiterate, growth is fabulous. But we need to really rethink and get a clear picture of the construction that will take place there. Alleyway parking, not a good idea. More and more people on corners, we are going to have diminished visibility in traffic. Seniors still go in that direction, and we want to make sure everybody is safe and healthy and have a constitutional right to the joy of their living environment. I thank you so much for listening. I will respect any decision that you make, but I want you to consider every facet and not just a few for our contractors, developers, and other individuals with financial gain. Thank you. Thank you for coming down. Anyone else wishing to speak in opposition? Yes. You're going to get a lot of me. I'm get to, I get to do this next week and the week after. Hi, Scott. My name is Alicia White. I live at 1304 North 5th Street. I live, when I look out my door, I see the grocery store. And what he's saying about the grocery store sounds great. I'm all for that. My problem is I get up every morning to hammering and nails and everything else in the neighborhood behind me less than, what, 500 feet? There are at least eight duplexes that have been built. We are getting overran by all of this new housing that's coming in here. And the streets aren't getting any bigger. I mean, 
other sides of town, they're dealing with it as well. But unfortunately, this is my side of town. This is my life. I worked at that store when I was young. Now, it's sort of run down. Yes, we need a new grocery store, but do we need more housing in that area? Every time I turn around, there's another duplex being built, and it's getting, it's getting out of hand. I mean, I just feel like at some point in time, somebody needs to step up and say, no, they have enough housing in that, that area. You can bring more businesses in. I don't have a problem with that. But I do have a problem with one more, one more duplex being put in my neighborhood where I can't even pull out of my street safely because cars are flying down the road. Less than a half a mile from there, there are at least 20 duplexes that were built close to the um, train tracks. A block from there on the left, a man is building eight. Then adjacent to that, I'll be back here next week where he promised the person that at 1300 that they'll get at least a duplex put there. And there's already a house there. Again, I just ask for you to just look at, look at those that have been there. I've been at that house 50 plus years. That's my parents' house. And I just ask that you think about that if this were your neighborhood. I thank you for your time. Have a good day. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak in opposition? The applicant has two minutes for rebuttal. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, as staff presented, you know, this falls within the land use policy. What's proposed meets that policy. It's in an area that's fairly well developed with roads, sidewalks, curbs, and gutters. It's an area that, you know, screens for mixed use, screens for walkability. There will not be duplexes here. Uh, I understand what people are saying. Uh, I don't disagree. Um, there's a lot of development in Nashville, but this is where development needs to occur. I think uh, Councilman Davis is going to be modifying his bill to include some affordability in this so that when residents are built that there will be an element of affordability. He can talk about that. But we're here today just for you to make a recommendation based upon land use policy. Uh, this meets the land use policy. It's recommended by Planning Commission to staff. It was on consent and I would encourage you and hopefully that you will uh, pass this or recommend approval of this and then let the rapport uh, take place at a council level. I attend a lot of meetings with Councilman Davis. He will thoroughly vet this through the council process. I promise you that. But we need a recommendation today based upon uh, contractual obligations on this uh, Douglas Corner. And so I would hope that you would support staff once again and recommend approval. Thank you, sir. And declare the public hearing closed. And we'll start with Commissioner Farr. Um, so I should know this, but regulatory SP means one without an attached site plan or anything, right? It's just purely regulatory. That's correct. There were standards included within this regulatory SP. Okay. So at this time, we don't have an, a project actually in front of us other than what Mr. Davis is correct. suggesting. Okay. Um, could you also, while you're up there, can you also, for the for the sake of um, the community residents that are here, kind of explain what this would mean for their property if this goes into place? I mean, just because we're changing to an SP in this area, it doesn't specifically do anything to their property at this time. I mean, it's still their property. They do what they want with it. That's correct. The development would be occurring for the um, individual parcels in front of us today. Okay. Councilman Davis? Tax assessor's office, and and it's the use of your home, and like um, Miss Miss Cookie and her sister. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I apologize, <laughs> Miss Miss. I know since I was young. Miss Cookie and her sister were one of the main ones I was worried about. It's the use of your house. You know, what I mean, if they're using it as a single family house, which they are, that's the use. And I've never used a what do you call it? An urban the bad word that we all all use the. Um, Eminent domain, um, I've yeah. never used that tool or suggested MDHA, even the water department use it in my district, you know, even when it was needed. So, you know, I don't see they have it, but for tax purposes, I know a lot of residents will worry about it. It's going to be MUL, you know, or MU use, you know. If the loans are using it as a single family house, they'll be taxed as normally as they are for a single family house. Can I ask you one other question? Do you know if the of the three homes that are there, I think I can ask this, are they uh, owner-occupied? I believe, I know her house is definitely owner-occupied. Okay. And the one on the uh, right side? Left. On the left side is owner -occupied. I think the one on the corner is a rental, though. Is that true? I think the one on the corner is a rental. Okay. 
And we put that vacant lot in there because of the opportunity to have some overflow parking, you know, because, you know, we all learned from the Holland House and the pharmacy stuff, right. you know, just for the opportunity so that, you know, folks can walk across the street to the grocery store, you know, and, don't have, and walk from the, hopefully from the extra parking over there. Well, I think from a policy perspective, I do like this idea. It does fit in with kind of what you're seeing throughout East Nashville overall with these, you know, commercial nodes, corner nodes. And um, so I like it from that perspective. Um, the fact that it's owner occupied certainly makes me feel better because that means that folks are not going to be displaced based on development opportunity. Um, because obviously we are setting this up to be an attractive development opportunity. Um, but, but because existing residents own their own homes, um, I, I, you know, feel confident that you're going to be okay. No one's going to, going to make you leave. Um, I understand development is challenging, um, and, and especially in these neighborhoods, which for a long time have, have a lot of opportunity and have not seen a, a tremendous amount of development. So I know, certainly I'm sympathetic to the hardships um, that this creates for, for existing residents, but I think from a planning perspective, I agree this, this is a good um, project. Commissioner Blackshear. I have a few questions just to make sure that I'm understanding what's um, going to be allowed if we were to um, approve the SP and it was approved um, at the council level. So the SP includes residential, office, and commercial, right? Correct. It would allow office, commercial, and residential. And some of the uh, community members were worried or I guess um, a little concerned about the type and amount of housing that would be in, allowed in this SP. Can you talk a little bit more about the housing type and density that would be allowed? Sure. Multifamily would be allowed as well as single family. Um, the requested FAR for this SP is 1.4, so it would vary depending on how many residential, by square footage of residential as well as commercial. Okay. So, so she was particularly concerned about duplexes, so that would be allowed correct okay um can maybe the councilman can talk a little bit more about the parking that was one of the concerns brought up uh, you said the vacant lot i guess would be reserved for parking well just think well hopefully that this will be a, you know especially grocery down there will be very popular you know especially with the neighborhood market being gone and so i asked very nicely and the applicant agreed to add in some empty parcels like um, Catherine Harrison, who own, who lives in the Cleveland Park neighborhood and is supporting this, she, she has that vacant parcel right there that nothing is developed on, the one that says SP, there's no houses on there. And the opportunity there for overflow is there, you know, just to keep everything off, because that's, um, I'm, I'm not 100 percent sure, but that's at least a half acre, which can park up to 60 cars. It might be a little bit bigger because it's a huge corner piece. It's almost the size of the Douglas Market itself right now. And then as far as duplex, duplex, the plan is to have um, the living spaces on top of the grocery, on top of the commercial space. So it won't be any true duplexes, okay. you know, but it will be multifamily on top of, those, of, of the store up there. And... Um Mr. Dale mentioned that there is the possibility of some type of uh, language being added to the bill regarding affordable housing. Yeah, I've talked to um, the applicant on this, and I do have some residents that have been displaced from the area, and and we both expressed the opportunity to put some affordability, true affordability, on uh, 120s and lower, you know, for about three of the units. There will be some Mac Daddy units with the with the view up top, you know, on there. You know, I'm not gonna make any bones about it, but the commitment from me and from the um, developer is, and also from the future, you know, tenant at the bottom, is to make sure that we can place back some of our friends and family members that have probably been displaced, that have been renters, getting them within that price point. You know, they, they won't have a backyard, obviously, you know, but it's a chance for a couple of our friends and our neighbors to come back into inside a neighborhood. And the building across the street included, it's an old daycare, which is already com already commercial. They looked at maybe expanding some services. They, are, they also are residents that live inside my district. So majority of the folks, except for the market owner and the corner, are all 
um, landowners and residents of my my neighborhood, and their whole feeling was, you know, hey, um, if this person is allowing to do something, what can I do with my daycare building here? You know, I'm like, well, you could open up another business or expand your daycare, and they wanted to be a part of it, so, you know, like I always tell people, what I do for the developers, I will do for my constituents, and so that's what I'm doing. Thanks. Commissioner Diaz? I had a question for Alex. Um, do we have anything in the SP about maximum height? It would follow the MULA standards, um, which is four stories and 60. Okay. Um, and then also, could you pull up the policy map again, please? What was the um, analysis for what lots were were it part of the application? Was it part of just the applicants that came forward and wanted to be part of it, or what was the analysis for that? Correct, the applicant came in and requested that these properties be included with the SP, and they all fall into the T4 neighborhood center policy, mm -hmm. which is how they were reviewed. Okay, um, I think given the policy and the fact that it's in that corner, in that node, it gives a better sense of it becoming a, a neighborhood center, an actual neighborhood, neighborhood center that has, you know, connect, connectivity, and especially with them being required to use the alley, I think that's great. Um, I do understand, though, the effects that it's going to create for the existing residents there, but I think with the analysis the staff made, I think I can support this, this project. Council lady. Thank you. Um, two questions. Alex, can I get you to um, describe what an FAR of 1.4 means? Sure, that's the allowable floor area ratio, so. And so support. describe a couple of scenarios, for example. Uh, if you cover the whole lot. If you cover 100% of the, the FAR would be the, the amount of coverage that you can have on the lot, which is one and a half times the lot size. So you could either cover the entire lot with one at point four, or you could reduce the size of that building and still have the same allowable square footage within the maximum height. Gotcha. So th there's a limit on how much actual square foot you can yes. put on that. And it's not a whole lot more than, than the actual square footage of the area. Which right. is, I think right. I think that's important for, for people to understand just in terms of how much this would bring to the area. I think there um, there are a lot of great things about it. I'm I'm concerned about uh, a corner being rezoned when there there is an owner who is not enthused about that. And I wonder if this project still works if it's a three corner project as opposed to a four corner project. Is that is that a possibility to consider? The owner, I'm, 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 I think I'm correct. Um, um, my neighbor's house is the one in the middle. Is the one in the middle. So her house is not on on either on either one of the corners. But if she'd like to be taken out, I don't know if I can now. You know, maybe a, the for planning. You know, but personally, if she decides to step out of it, you know, before I go to third, can she do that? Planning staff. She can, uh, but. She, she can reduce it, or you, not she, you. Okay. Uh, you can reduce the the area covered under the SP. But, uh, Council Lady, if, if I will, uh, it is a neighborhood center. Uh, that's the policy for the area. And uh, and it is envisioned that it would cover all four corners over time. And I, and I would point back out that, that someone else had already stated, and that is that, it, that as long as she's living in that house and using it the way that she is, it's not going to negatively affect her taxes uh, just by rezoning it. And I don't uh, know. If anything, it probably increases the value at the time that she should ever decide to sell it. I, I, thank you. I appreciate, appreciate that input. I guess because it's a uh, regulatory SP as opposed to a specific SP, um, I'm just wondering if that that all three of those parcels could come along later when there's an honest to goodness, we know what we're gonna do sort of SP. Um, 
And perhaps at that point, there could be a discussion about those three parcels and what the uses for them are. I, 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 just, I mean, I have a neighborhood that has all these funny little commercial pockets in it, and some of them are the corner, and some of them are just half the street, and it seems to work very well. Um, so I just, I just wonder if that's a possibility that would, that would sort of make a, many more people happy. I'll throw that out. And it's always a possibility that we could take out during, during committee our third reading. You know, Chairwoman Allen, I appreciate <laughs> your input. Um, but, you know, I don't, and I know other folks watch the videos here, but once again, you know, it could also, you know, help her with the value of the home, too, because of being the commercial, too. But it's up to her. If she wants to come, I will do what she asked me to do. You, you are always good to work with people, and I appreciate your community engagement. Um, I, th I think all the other pieces make, make good sense, and, and having those fun little commercial areas, whether it's mixed use or commercial neighborhood as it's currently used, I think can be for sure beneficial. I just think it's important to, to make sure that the owners of the property are, are supportive. All right. Councilman Tim. Commissioner Tibbs, I was going to promote you, <laughs> Councilman, <laughs> Commissioner. Got you, got you. Um, now, actually, following Councilman Allen, I kind of follow her. The, the question she brought up is kind of what my concerns were, and I think those addressed it. So, uh, I'm in, uh, I'm in support based on some of that discussion about the homeowners. Commissioner Hagan, do. I'm struggling with this one now. Um, because of all the, the points you've made, Councilman Rowland, um, I'm, I'm confused, I think, I get this, the center and the corners, but if you look at this, there's a lot beside the daycare. Why is that not included? And there's a lot, you know, in terms of the, the areas, you've got two homeowners who live there, three people who live across the street from the market, one of which has stood here and said, I don't want my house in this SP. Agreed, it doesn't change current living, but if, in theory, if the developer now comes and buys the lot on the corner and builds a four-story duplex up to four stories or whatever it is, she does have to look at it. <laughs> um, and I, I'm with you, I would be more comfortable if those two lots, I mean, even if you just included the corner lot but took the other two out just because a property owner has said, I don't want to be included. And if someone who lives in a house and if somebody came to me and said, I'm going to put you in this and this is what we're going to do, I would not probably say the same thing. I don't want to be included, then I shouldn't be included. Um, regardless of what it does to your, with your property value. Because we all know, I mean, not in due respect, I think a parking lot would be great, but I highly doubt there's going to be a parking lot built on this corner lot here once it's rezoned. I would guarantee you you're going to see something with a lot more value than a parking lot. And that's not saying that's a bad thing. It's just... A blanket statement that there's no way in Hades that's going to be a parking lot. Um, <laughs> and if that's the case, I want to invest in that too. Um, so I'm just curious as to why there was three lots included on this side and only one with the daycare and not the house next to it. Is that something? Is there a reason that the the lot by the daycare is not included in this? Count, Councilman, how should we put up the policy yes. as well? Um, the lot. Now, we see where the daycare is, right? Right, it's 470, the, the right? The lot behind the daycare is an SP lot, which is owned by a developer that does, that, that, that does not live in my district. And since my neighbors that live right there will be mostly impacted, they should be the ones I felt to benefit from it. Now, that's Catherine Harris's, that's the vacant lot. They've done nothing for that lot for the last 20 years. And Catherine Harrison lives in the neighborhood. She's Miss Harrison's daughter, God rest her soul, one of the founders of Cleveland Street Baptist Church. And so, so most of my neighbors here know Catherine. If Catherine is going to want to lease it out to them for a parking lot, if that's an opportunity, I'd rather my citizen who lives in my district have the opportunity than someone, I do stuff for people that live outside of our neighborhood all the time. I'm just trying to do something for the folks that are living in that corridor. And that's why I was, before I went forward this, I had to make sure that as long as you're using it as a single family house, you get taxed as a single family house. Now it's, it, it may be, you know, a greater use, but as long as those folks still use it as a single family house, they'll be taxed and they'll be treated like one. And the people that own a daycare, um, you know, not trying to put any names out there. A lot of us know Ben Jordan, who lives in my neighborhood. He was a Cleveland Park neighborhood president for a long time. And, you know, my whole thing is, 
you know, let my folks who live in the neighborhood start benefiting from this redevelopment and have some opportunity. You know, and that's why we were just going to just do the Douglas Market itself. You know, but I saw an opportunity to help, you know, some of the folks that have been having the duplexes built next to them and, you know, to participate and benefit from some of this. But, if, but you know, by third reading, if someone want out, then I'm all for it. We'll just do the Douglas, you know, market itself, you know, and, and let it go. Well, that, that, that's not what I really what I was. I mean, 469 is the lot I was asking yes. about, and why that wasn't included. If there was a reason, which the one, one beside 470. I can't mind. Oh, sorry, the one beside the one purple box beside the daycare. Just, just south yeah. of the yeah, daycare. Just south of the daycare. Point to it. That one right here. Just, just as it was, just curious that that one's not included. That you have three on the other. You know, the, one of which is a is a property owner who doesn't yeah. want to be included. That's and, and also, I could more for because I know there's a big church next to there that they run a, a couple of businesses out of that church. So, you know, um, when you go up the the box, so the the, the red boxes are the okay. Two forty nine. Yeah, that's not. Yeah, that's not included. Oh yeah, that's that's okay. farther away, and it's uh, yeah. definitely outside of that scope of that. Yeah, and I definitely didn't want to include a lot behind the SPY. It's this one right here that I'm asking about, but it, it's 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 just a personal question based on the the proportions of the corner, and I, I understand staffs. I understand and appreciate respect mm -hmm. the staff's discussion of of why, and why it's been done this way, but again with a property owner saying I don't want to be included and me seeing no real reason why they need to be at this point, I'm a little hesitant to, as far as that. And you say before third reading, why would we need to wait till before third reading to do that? Well, is that I, a, I mean, is it been through Well, what, what I think they're referring to is that there's another opportunity. Uh, this body makes a recommendation to the council and the reason and the zoning bill goes back to council and so right. they still have second and third reading and and with the zoning bill they have the opportunity all the way through third reading to to that to change it but and so that's that thing that's all they're saying is that they'll have a public hearing at council and then the the council can choose to change the bill at that time which happens so often okay <laughs> there, there, there could be more than one uh, change too and they yeah. generally try to get all the changes on third reading so they're uh, not doing yeah. multiple amendments okay. I'm gonna all right uh, any other dis thank you councilman any other discussion we'll need a motion I, I'd like to make a motion if y'all coach me along if I'm doing this wrong I, 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 I think the discussion has been good I think it's a good a good project and I would be enthusiastic to recommend approval if the discussion of lots now I can't read the numbers 471 and 472 right. could be considered as as the process continues if those 471 and 472 could be discussed as as possibly being ones to consider taking out then I would then I would feel comfortable giving my support to this I feel well, like the we'll, other we'll need a definitive motion I think so uh, <laughs> probably the motion would be to approve if lots 471 and 472 are excluded are is that excluded. okay uh, I, yeah the, the way I would phrase it is that to uh, approve with the condition that uh, 71 and 72 are removed from the rezoning before final passage all right and heard. disapprove right and disapprove without the removal of 471 and 72. So that's the motion. Is there a second? Second. A second. Any other discussion? All in favor of staff's recommendation, including to remove 471 and 472, say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Ayes have it. Motion passes. All right. We are on item. Num are we? We're. We've only been in session for about an hour and 15 minutes, so let's, if it's okay, we'll continue, go to item 16. Okay, that objection, item 16, here we go. Okay, item 16. 
This is a request to rezone to SP to permit a residential development with up to two units on the corner of Stockel Street and Hancock Street. Staff recommendation is to approve with conditions and disapprove without all conditions. Uh, just a bit of history in regards to this property. There was originally a request uh, submitted to rezone to R6, which was heard by the Planning Commission. The Planning Commission recommended disapproval of that rezoning to straight R6. A bill was, was uh, requested and moving, and it is currently moving through the process. In the interim, it has been re-referred to the Planning Commission and converted to a specific plan. The property is currently zoned SP. This is part of the Cleveland McFerrin SP rezoning, which permits all uses that are allowed under RS5 plus detached accessory dwelling units. The plan as proposed includes two attached residential dwelling units. Uh, the units are oriented towards Stockel Street for one door here. And then the second unit has a door that is oriented to Hancock Street with a wraparound porch. All vehicular access and parking is located off of the existing alley. Um, and there is a condition that would require landscaping to buffer uh, the parking from Hancock Street as well. Elevations have been provided uh, for the units, and you can see that this is the front fronting on Stockel Street, and this is the side fronting on Hancock with the wraparound porch and the entrance. Uh, the height is uh, two stories. Uh, this plan supports one critical planning goal in that it supports infill development on an existing uh, urban lot. The policy for the area is T for urban neighborhood maintenance. And the request is consistent with the policy, although the predominant land use type within the area is single family residential. There are duplexes and multifamily units interspersed throughout the area. The location of the property at an intersection makes it an appropriate location for a two family unit. Uh, there are existing sidewalks within the area um, and, the area and the property is within close proximity to a park and walkable to non-residential uses as well. Uh, this is a map that shows the existing land use pattern for the area. The property in question here on the corner of Hancock Street and Stockel Street. As you can see, the yellow, the darker orange that are dotted throughout are existing duplexes. This more intense brown here is multifamily uses. And then dotted throughout is um, commercial uses as well. Again, staff recommendation is to approve with conditions and disapprove without all conditions as the item is consistent with the land use policy for the area and meets a critical planning goal of supporting infill development. Thank you. We'll declare the public hearing open and the applicant will have 10 minutes to speak. Councilman, come on up. That was a disapproval but working with the um, applicant who's unable to be here today um, and working with my neighbors and working with my council members and with the planning staff who worked hard on this, uh, we turned a bill that was disapproved that we changed during the council pro process. And now instead of having two separate homes, we have um, two connected units um, that are on a corner. Um, my lots are usually 50 by 150. This is a 50 by 170, which is a longer corner lot. Um, one of the reasons why I felt like two units were compatible here was number one, um, when we were connecting two units, you know, it's a cheaper price point. So it, it can attract some affordability. But more importantly, this lot has been vacant for several years. And I think the house burned down maybe 10 years ago. I'm not 100% sure. But as a vacant lot, you probably get around $500 a year in tax revenue. But when you have two single family houses, you're now getting $2,000 per unit. So I'm going from 500 to $4,000. And then I don't have an empty lot that Public Works has to clean up and Public Works doesn't have to mow every every time my neighbors get mad when the grass gets overgrown. So we'll save some money that way and recruit some of that, that tax revenue. Because now instead of having a vacant lot, which gives me $500 um, a year, it gives me um, $4,000 now because there's two single family residents there. And that's all I have. Thank you, Councilman. We'll reserve your, you can have a rebuttal, obviously, and 
Anyone wishing to speak in support? Anyone wishing to speak in opposition? Please, you know the drill. <laughs> <laughs> I do. My name again, Lisa Spell, 611 North 5th Street. I'm right around the corner from this location, and I did send to you the planning.commissioners at nashville.gov this packet that includes my complaints, my issues, my concerns. Complaint is not a good word. However, I also am proactive in the community. I take it upon myself to walk through the community, take a really good look. I sent you images so you could get a true picture of how parking is so bad, the streets are narrow. The alleyways that are going to get used by multifamilies on this corner lot is going to get ridiculous and we're going to work public works to death. Taxes, property taxes, revenue, and dense populations, this is not the place for that type of structure. It is a marvelous place, however, for family dwelling, probably single family, detached, corner lot, it's beautiful, and you get the same amount of tax revenue from a single family dwelling. If that's the main issue, we want money for the city, and then we would for multifamily dwellings. Less crime, let me say that again. If the fire department has to come out and rescue one unit, both units are down. Populations or family members are displaced been relying on nonprofit organizations like the American Red Cross to repair the issue. Help us maintain a very positive community. I also sent you pictures of clusters of multifamily attached units that are new. And if you take a look at that and you see how the streets are packed, it is impossible for fire, emergency units, rescues, police department, school buses, and our wonderful trash collectors. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak in opposition? Seeing none, uh, rebuttal. My neighbor is very smart and she knows her neighborhood. Um, particularly, you know, with that corner right there, you know, you know, originally, you know, Neighbors were happy they wanted two separate family homes, you know, but to, to be in compliance with the policy and, you know, and helping out with some affordability by taking two single family homes and combining them and putting them fully attached and putting the parking in the alley, you know, I understand there are some concerns with that, but it's better that I feel personally and anybody can disagree with me, it's okay, we're all friends. You know, by putting the parking in the alley and getting it off the street, hopefully that will help with some of that congestion. And that's one of the requirements I believe in here that we made sure that, A, you put the green space buffer up, and also you put all your parking for these two units in the back, in which they'll be, they will be sold to two individual families or people. And so hopefully you'll get twice the bang for your buck, you know, for the tax revenue, which can help with some paving and helping in the fire department with some services. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Councilman. We'll declare the public hearing closed. And how about we start with Commissioner Tibbs? Not Councilman this time. Not Councilman this time. <laughs> Um, I do feel like, um, uh, from a density standpoint, that this is a uh, probably a, uh, a good lot that supports uh, this type of development. Um, and I'm um, very respectful understanding of one in a single, you know, single family detached. But um, because of the length of it and because of the, the size and the corner, um, it does seem like it's a good opportunity. So um, I. Based on um, the site plan, I, I'd be in favor of it. Mr. Hagee? No. Mr. Farr? Um, oh. I know. He's back. I'm just sitting here. Do we have a new idea of this? <laughs> We're going to skip the previous chairman. <laughs> just come back chairman, to me. I apologize. It's been a long time <laughs> since I had anything to say. So. <laughs> Now this is a, a corner lot, it's a vacant, uh, you could build a single family on it by right, but it's on an alley, parking obviously with the, with the parking's going to be on the, on the alley, so it should eliminate um, on street parking except for guests, and um, so I think it's a good project and I've, I'm in favor of it. 
Well, you can move on. Thank you, Chairman. <laughs> <laughs> Commissioner Farr. So, um, I guess I looked around the, can we pull up the, the, the plan that shows what all of the surrounding lots are again? Yeah, that one. So, as I look around, um, certainly as you go up Stockel, it's, you know, it looks like there's been a lot of new investment in rehabbing single family homes up and down that street, or some new investment in rehabbing single family homes up and down that street. Um, and it looks like there's also quite a few homes that are ripe for renovation or um, demolition and rebuilding in the area too. Um, so I am a little bit concerned about setting the precedent for two family homes uh, at a duplex into this area. Um, I recognize this lot's different, and if it, it would be a different case if they came and they were trying to redo this in the middle of the block, but once we start it, you can start bringing it down the street. Um, you know, I just, I, I'm worried about introducing um, more duplexes right into the heart of, of this area that looks like it's, there's been a fair amount of um, investment in trying to rehab single family homes. Um, so I understand there's reasons for putting it here um, from a policy perspective, but I also think as you go around East Nashville and you see these duplexes that have been thrown into so many areas that just really weren't expecting them, um, at some point we need to sort of take a step back and say, is this what we want our housing stock to look like 30 years down the road? And um, I think what's there, I would be more in favor of, of replicating what's in that area already versus introducing something new. Commissioner Blanchard. I have a question. Um, do we know how old those duplexes are that are in the area? Are those relatively new or? No, those are for the most part existing um, duplexes that are in a, a single structure. Okay, single structure. I have to say that um, I'm considering this as an improvement than what the zoning allows. It says that this is has a maximum height of, what was it, 30, I guess 39 with foundation, right? 39 and a half. And what, what's existing, the zoning allows, what, 52 feet with foundation? That's correct, and the and the thirty the the height on this at the highest point is thirty nine right. with the foundation, uh -huh. um, but yes, the existing zoning would allow with the foundation up to fifty two. I think, given that analysis and that information, and you know, what staff has provided for us, I think that this is something I can support based on you know just thinking that this won't be taller than what's already allowed, and I think that's sometimes what a lot of people are fearful about. And I think the project seems like it was very mindful of trying to stay within the um, context of the the neighborhood. Council lady. Thank you. I, I want to thank the council member for going back and, and working on, I mean, I, I think the reason we weren't comfortable with the R6 is there weren't any design standards and that something thoughtful and, and, and better than what could be there without the design standards um, is the result of that. And um, I think from from what I understand from earlier conversations, there have been community meetings, there's support from the neighborhood. Um, so um, I, I believe I can be in support of this. All right, we'll need a motion. Any, any other discussion? We'll need a motion. Move to recommend staff approval. It's been a motion to recommend staff approval. Is there a second? Second. second. Any other discussion? All in favor, say aye. aye. Opposed, no. One no, Commissioner Farr's report her as a no. And it passes. We are, we've gone through half of the agenda. And so how about a quick 10 minute break? Is that okay with everyone? So we'll uh, take a quick 10 minute break and we'll be back to finish, finish the rest of the meeting.
hallway. Uh, her name was Kat Hitchcock. Um, and, and just for her benefit, I want to uh, share briefly um, what her concern was. But she's decided uh, to leave and, and, and doesn't wish to speak. So I, I think it can be considered on the consent agenda again, if that would be OK with you. Um, basically, this uh, uh, area to be uh, potentially down zoned is uh, 51 properties. There's two existing tall skinnies in the area already. And she's the immediate neighbor of um, one of the existing tall skinnies. And uh, three years ago, when it was built, um, she watched uh, a 50-year-old magnolia tree that her grandmother had planted get knocked down, and uh, and she's you know upset still about um, that having happened a few years ago. Um, after we talked about the community plan calling for neighborhood maintenance and um, the uh, widespread support um, from other neighbors in the area, um, she reconsidered and decided to not stay and ask to speak. So with that, I would ask if it's uh, okay with you guys to consider it again on the consent agenda. Thank you, Councilman. And so that puts us in the framework to put it back on the consent agenda, and we'll just ask, is anyone in the audience here opposing item number 24? And seeing none, I think it's appropriate and without objection, or should we take a vote? Yeah, we need to make a motion to place it back on the consent agenda. Let's do that. Is there a motion to place it back on the consent agenda? So I move. Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. Opposed, no. I have it. It's placed back on the consent agenda, item 24. Thank you, Council. All right. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. We are now ready for item 22. Uh, hello, Commissioners. My name is Justin Wallace, and I am presenting a case to apply a new urban design overlay along Murfreesboro Pike at Una Antioch. The UDO district applies to the properties shown in yellow just south of the airport from Donaldson Pike to Franklin Limestone Road. Planning staff recommendation is to approve the urban design overlay district. The current zoning includes various zoning categories, including office, residential, mixed use, and commercial. The main community character policies include district office concentration, and suburban mixed-use corridor. The proposed UDO at Una Antioch provides a general framework for development along Murfreesboro Pike, but it does not prescribe a specific design. The UDO establishes a consistency in streetscape and development pattern with adequate sidewalks, appropriate landscaping, and minimum building design standards in order to create a complete suburban environment. Just as a reminder, here are three things to remember about urban design overlays. A UDO is a zoning tool um, used by planners to require regulatory design standards within a designated area. The design standards contained in a UDO do not replace the base zoning, but still have the same effect and force as the base zoning. And finally, a UDO is used to establish a future character for a given area. The purpose, the purpose of the proposed UDO is to implement goals established in the Antioch Priest Lake Community Plan, which was last updated and adopted in conjunction with Nashville Next in June of 2015. Goal 7 of the Antioch Priest Lake Community Plan recommends utilizing UDOs to apply higher design standards to create pedestrian-friendly corridors. During that community engagement process for the community plan, residents expressed a strong desire for better development pattern along Murfreesboro Pike. Specifically, they called for better architectural standards, better landscaping and development that provides a safe environment for pedestrians as well as for cars. Later, a vision survey was undertaken to gauge the community's preferences regarding appropriate streetscaping, building massing and materials along Murfreesboro Pike. In 2013, the first Murfreesboro Pike urban design overlay was created to implement the community's vision along the corridor. The proposed UDO at Una Antioch is similar in content to the existing UDO, which is located further south, extending all the way to the county line. The proposed UDO is also consistent with the major and collector street plan. The segment identified in the drawing in heavy blue is designated as a priority corridor in the Nashville Next general plan. 
that calls for an immediate need for coordinated investments in high capacity transit and to include the implementation of Murfreesboro Pike as a complete street. The corridor is envisioned to accommodate sidewalks, protected bikeways, street crossings, streetscaping, and for transit improvements for a high capacity transit line along Murfreesboro Pike. The proposed UDO provides a framework for development in five main areas listed here. They are site layout and massing of buildings, building design, landscaping, access and parking, and signage. And to briefly go through those general areas, the site layout and massing uh, includes provisions on building height and width. This section also includes standards for building orientation and setbacks. The building design includes standards for the front of the building, such as window openings and materials. Landscaping standards include provisions for shade trees and perimeter landscaping around surface parking lots. The screening standards include appropriate locations for utility and service areas. Access standards include provisions for an efficient parking design and safe areas for people to walk. Finally, the signage standards restricts the amount of signage displayed on a site, but includes provisions for signage to be designed at an appropriate and pedestrian scale. And just to go over the compliance process, the UDO recommends that any new development should be built in compliance with the UDO standards to the greatest extent practical. However, building permits for minor improvements such as roofing or regular maintenance or building additions of less than 25% of the existing square footage would not trigger compliance with standards. The UDO standards would apply to any new construction on a parcel or building additions greater than 25% of the existing square footage. The signage standards would apply for whenever a sign permit is required. Again, staff recommendation is to approve. Thank you. We'll declare the public hearing open, and the applicants are the two council ladies, and so y'all can come up. And um, Council Lady Virtue, you want to go first, or Council Lady Johnson? Who wants to go first? Welcome, Council Lady. Thank you. Good evening, Commissioners. I'm Council Lady Vercher, representing District 28. Um, I will be brief. Um, this UDO is one that the community wants. Um, it would aid in protecting this corridor. Um, that's the gateway to many of our neighborhoods. Um, this uh, UDO um, that we're proposing, um, it touches District 28 and 29. Um, it would add the continuity um, with the aesthetics for the, the current existing UDO uh, further south on Murfreesboro Road. Um, as already uh, illustrated, and I know you already know that um, it will provide consistency as it relates for designs on that corridor. Um, and it just overall just add to the appeal of the corridor and the gateways to the neighborhoods over there. I ask uh, that you that you support this. Thank you. Thank you, Council Aide. Council Aide Johnson, would you? Uh, anyone wishing to speak in support of the UDO? Please come up. Anyone? Wishing to speak in opposition. Thank you for coming. Please state your name and your address. My name is Mike Fatahi. I have a property 1909 and 1911 Murfreesboro Road. Uh, this area, this constant lady trying to improve is pretty much a dead zone. It's a commercial area that uh, has a PUD. Nobody can build any anything in that neighborhood. And the the taxes are very high, and I don't know who is with her. I don't know anybody who has a property, commercial property in that area is with her. The only thing she's bringing to that area is a headache for the, the landowners. I've been trying to get somebody to build me something over there because of that PUD, I cannot build anything. This is a new headache for the owners. I don't know any of the owners of the property in that area that they want this thing on their property. This is an extra cost, and I, I really don't know who's with her. I mean, she says there are a lot of people with her. I don't know anybody. He said, there is nobody walking in Morphysboro Road, nobody doing the biking in Morphysboro Road. That part of Morphysboro Road is almost dead. The only thing you get in that part of Morphysboro Road is high taxes. And she's going to make it even harder to be the anything else. Thank you. 
Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak in opposition? Please come to the microphone. Good afternoon, and thank you for listening to this opportunity. Um, I am the owner of 1919 Murfreesboro Road, State which is name. the next building, the next land to this guy. And we are under the PUD. Uh, we don't have the opportunity to build anything over there. Why? Because there are so many restrictions. For instance, my piece of lot does not have access to Murfreesboro Road. Unfortunately, I bought this property and I trapped since eight years ago because uh, according with the codes, I had to build a bridge in order to use my property. I had deals with the um, Una Baptist Church and with the Chase Cantor apartments. They don't have, I don't have access, basically. And now with those restrictions, the PUD, and with these other restrictions, high standards at the style of Franklin, Brentwood, that's a good idea. I mean, in the paper, congratulations, it's a good, good looking thing in the paper. But reality, do you know what is Antioch right now? Do you, do you really think that this is gonna happen? For instance, if I go to rent a piece of property over there, uh, let's say um, I'm going to put a, a shop, and then the landlord is going to tell me, hey, you have to do these standards, because that is what the council proposed. So you have to invest two, 3,000 in order to go under those requirements. Do you really think that someone is, in this area, is going to invest 3,000 just to look nicer? Instead of bring businesses, what this, over, this overlay is trying to do is to stop people to go in there and put in small businesses. Thank you, sir. We didn't get your name. Can you restate your name and your address? Uh, my name is Santiago Meneses. The address is 1919 Murfreesboro Road. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak in opposition? Council lady, would you like to have a rebuttal? Thank you. Um, I want to reiterate that uh, we have overwhelming support of both business owners and residents in the area, as uh, Councilwoman Bircher uh, stated earlier, uh, that um, this is what the people want. Um, this is giving minimum design standards. Um, it does not replace the base zoning. It establishes a positive uh, pedestrian environment, which is positive for business owners and residents alike, and it's in line with uh, what we are seeing develop as our future transit plan uh, for this quarter. So for that and what the staff has recommended in their report, I ask that you approve uh, this urban design overlay. Thank you. Thank you, Council Lady. We'll declare the public hearing closed. And how about we start with Council Lady Allen. I'm not sure I have any questions. I have, I have a number of successful uh, UDOs in my neighborhood and they've been a great catalyst for making things begin to happen. So um, I think based on, on all the advantages that both the council ladies have, have put forth um, and what, I, what I've seen actually happen, I think that it will be a pleasant surprise even to those that, that are concerned with, with what it will do and I, I would support it. Commissioner Diaz. Commissioner Blackshear. Well, that's one of the, I'm glad you said that, Council Lady. That's one of the points I wanted to raise. I think the idea of the Councilwoman Award to basically ameliorate the community to the benefit of the landowners and not to harm that. And I was going to ask staff, I'm glad she talked about how UDOs have improved certain areas and how they've actually been beneficial even to those who maybe weren't um, wanting them initially. Commissioner Farr. Um, I just have a question. So if in a situation like the landowner described where it sounds like there's a, a hardship that would that would prevent him from something like having the building entrance off of Murfreesboro Pike, are there ways to get exceptions within the UDO? Or, I mean, can you apply for variances or something like that if, if a property owner can show that it's truly a hardship for them? Sure, I can answer that. 
Um, yes, there is a modification process. Um, if there is a hardship, a physical constraint with the site, uh, the applicant can uh, request a modification um, from planning. Okay. Okay, that was my only question. Mr. Chairman? Please. Yes, sir. No, I um, think it's a good uh, move. Agree with you, Council Lady, and uh, does help generate uh, people coming in and make it what, what we're hoping these communities to be. So I can support Ms. Hagan. Ms. All right, we need a motion. Motion to approve the staff recommendation. It's been a motion and a second. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Ayes have it. Passes. On item 23. Okay, item 23 is a request for rezoning. This is a request to change zoning from CL, RS5, and SP to R6A. Staff recommendation is to approve with a substitute ordinance. The existing zoning of the area is CL, commercial limited, RS5, single family, and SP. The SP is a portion of the Cleveland McFerrin Park SP, which permits all uses allowed under RS5, plus the addi addition of uh, detached accessory dwelling units. There are several land use policies covering the area. T4 Urban Open Space, which is the location of an existing park. T4 Urban Neighborhood Center, which is for two properties located here that are currently in use as single family. T4 Urban Neighborhood Evolving here along this corridor, and T4 Urban Neighborhood Maintenance for the majority of the area. The request is consistent with these policies in that the area is primarily located in Urban Neighborhood Maintenance Policy and Urban Neighborhood Evolving Policy. Staff is recommending that the substitute uh, be used to remove the one property that's currently in use as the park, and that would be the open space, open space policy. The neighborhood evolving a policy is intended to provide more housing choices, which can be achieved with this proposed zoning district. Additionally, neighborhood maintenance areas are expected to experience some change over time. Because of the existing land use within the area, the proposed zoning allows for any new construction to be compatible with and retain the existing character of the neighborhood. This shows you an existing land use pol or existing land use for the area. Um, I've put a hatch over the area that's requested for the rezoning that you can see there. As you can see, there's a mixture of land uses throughout this area, including single family, multifamily, and duplexes. <clears throat> uh, single family, multifamily, and duplexes within the area. Staff is recommending approval with a substitute. Um, because this is a request for a larger area within a neighborhood maintenance area, the request is consistent with the policy and the proposed zoning will allow for a variety of housing options. Those would include single family, two family, as well as detached accessory dwelling units. This provides for a mixture of housing options. Uh, the area currently exists, current, the area currently includes a mixture of land uses. Um, there are existing sidewalks throughout the area and there's existing bus service within close proximity. Um, this area is within a UZO, and within a UZO, given the R6A request, it would require access be limited to alleys, and there are existing alleys throughout this area. Um, this area is also in close proximity to downtown, as well as the Dickerson Pike Corridor, making it appropriate location for a mixture of housing types. In conclusion, staff recommends approval with a substitute ordinance to remove the existing park property. Thank you, and the applicant has, that's the councilman. 
We need to give you a raise today, Council. <laughs> Thank you for coming again. And this won't be the last time I'll be up here today. I think we got two more afterwards. Councilman Scott Davis. Um, part of this area, actually majority of this area, except for a couple of, except for the parcels on North 2nd, were left out of the, um, and Council Lady Allen, if you can please chime in when it's appropriate also, were left out of the DADU overlay. Um, just a brief history, um, during the council process three years ago, um, we were looking at adding the DADU use um, to our zoning code. And our six areas were included. Oh, originally, our S5 areas were included. However, though, um, at the request of a lot of my colleagues, uh, they were asking for RS5 to be taken out originally. And so I went ahead and did a DADU SP, which then, you know, it worked for a majority of the area. And then we wanted to do it again, but we left out because there's a lot of my stuff is zoned commercial and we didn't want any commercial stuff being interrupted at the time. And so because the commercial pockets in there, stuff was left out. And there were a lot of single family housing that was zoned commercial also, which on the corner of Hancock, which you can see also, that were left out of there as well as, and which kept most of that street, actually all of that street of Hancock out of the Dadu overlay originally. Well, then we tried to create a Dadu overlay tool, but then that was denied also by other council members and outside entities. Um, Council Allen worked her, her worked hard to get it done, but it was unsuccessful. And, and so now we're here. Now with the R6A, and if I'm, if I'm wrong, I got this from the zoning administrator. If I'm wrong, wrong Mr. Sloan, please correct me, sir. Um, whereas access shall be from improved alleys only. And I went, I sat down with Richard Thermopolis and I brought him pictures of weird looking duplexes throughout the district and throughout areas of East Nashville. The alley access, you know, only requiring, because there are improved alleys throughout all of these areas, which means if somebody were to do a dad do, of course we know they gotta put the parking in the rear, put a garage back there, and put a space for their tenant to park. Now, it will allow connected duplexes in some areas, which I already have a lot along North 2nd already of connected duplexes. And the weird thing is people are like, we know it doesn't allow the tall skinnies. You know, with the A access there, it protects against the separate tall skinnies. Now, someone, was saying, hey, but it will allow for a back and front duplex like what Ariel built. The zoning over there where Ariel built those houses that everybody was scared of, it's a regular R6 that had already been zoned there. And plus, they don't have alleys. And this is the key here. They're not back and front. They're kind of, one sits back a little bit and it's open on the side. You have a shared driveway. But with this having a provision saying alleyways only with the A, all those have alleys, so you can't have that kind of access uh, with, according to the zoning code here that I'm, that, that, I'm, that I'm reading. And so it prevents a lot of those funny looking houses that everybody complains about. And developers are mad because the first thing they hear is R6, they're like, all right, we're gonna be able to do, do two tall skinnies. But when they looked at the A part, they got mad at me. And I'm like, this is a request of my citizens, you know, who are left out of the DADU and also preventing some of the current, you know, weirdness from happening. And so with the A added to the R6, it prevents a lot of the stuff that we don't like to see, but it will also allow my citizens who are left out of the, the DADU process to be able to build their DADUs now. And that's why we're looking at R6A, and also with the commercially zoned single family housing, you know, I didn't want to take some of their rights away, and so we thought, well, your house is zoned commercial, Potentially, it's on a corner. It's worth more, but if we if, can, you sacrifice with the R6A. You know, you could do your dad do, you know, but you won't be commercial anymore. And a lot of the people who look at this, they say, well, if it's R6A, you know, what if I don't want to do a connected duplex? There's going to be connected duplexes up and down my my, my block. You know, connected is a lot better than the tall skinnies, you know. But most of those houses along those corridors are new construction and also our new renovated new homeowners. At one time, my district was 80% rental. Now we're looking at a 75% home ownership now. 
and those are recent homeowners the last five years. And, and there are a couple of developers on the uh, commission. Um, if you bought a house two years ago in my district for $400,000 or for $350,000, um, the market is not there where someone can afford to buy out your mortgage and give you enough money to buy another house to build, two, build one connected duplex. You'd have to sell each side of that connected duplex for $900,000 a piece. And no offense to anybody living in Belle Mead or Bellevue, but we're not here. I don't live in Belle Mead or Bellevue. Um, um, duplex does not go for $900,000 a side in Cleveland Park and McFerrin. And, you know, I'm asking for the support of my constituents. There's some people out there that have been were left out, and we're trying to include them and, it, and also make my colleagues out in the suburbs happy so that, you know, because, you know, the RS5 does not allow, even though we're this close to downtown, the RS5 does not allow for a dad to detach the accessory dwelling. Thank you. I'll reserve my time for rebuttal. Thank you, Councilman. Anyone wish to speak in support? Please come in microphone. Anyone wish to speak in opposition? Come, come on. I am the opposition girl today. Sorry about that. No, you're fine. Oh, again. Hello. My name is Lisa Spell, 611 North 5th Street, District 5. I'm in opposition for the following reasons. First, I'd like to ask, did all of you receive my packet with photo images? Okay. So I'm presuming that you've all read the information. Yes, we did. Fabulous. So alleyways, narrow, non-paved. All of the dwellings that we're building, multifamily, sometimes multi-level, I don't care how tall they are, how short they are. I am concerned about the numbers of people who are coming into the community that it's going to improve the revenue base but diminish safety, health, and the welfare of the community. I'm concerned about that. I'm concerned that when you drive down the alleyway and we have several vehicles pulling out of their back garages and parking places, that we're not gonna have enough space for two or three cars. High traffic during high traffic times, going to school, going to work, coming home from work, problematic. Most families don't have one car. We have two cars, three cars, four cars, five cars. We will run out of space in the back in the garage. So now we're on the public thoroughfare, around the corner, on the corners, visibility diminished. I want our community to prosper. I want us to continue to grow. I want us to think and reason, and not only think about revenue, but think about the concerned areas. We are not, by nature, urbanized folks. We're trying to gradually get there. Now I want to talk about contractors and developers. If we're going to build these structures, we need to have courtesy in the communities, get fencing, follow the guidelines set by public work, get your permission, permits, and let the neighbors know you're coming in advance. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Anyone else? Come on up. My name is Whitney Greer. I live at 319 Hancock Street. Um, I'm one of the houses that is proposed to be in the zoning. Um, I'm also one of the houses that was left out of the original SP zoning that would allow for attached, uh, detached accessory dwellings. I'm in support of detached accessory dwellings, and a few of the people on my block are. Um, I'm, I'm not understanding why um, the size of this rezoning is so massive. I think it's going to change the the footprint of our neighborhood, and I'm a little bit concerned about that. Um, and I also, I tried to do a little bit of research on this before I came, and it looks like 130 of the properties are already zoned um, SP to allow for detached accessory dwellings um, out of the 169 proposed to be rezoned. So I'm a little bit confused about that. And again, this is the first time I've ever done something like this, so I could be wrong. Um, I also think, um, I know Scott Davis said that um, most of the, the houses included are new construction. I know that there's a single house on my entire block that's new construction. Um, there's also one being built that hasn't been finished yet. Um, so I, I don't think that that's necessarily true. We moved to our home, we renovated it. We have several neighbors who moved to their homes and loved the character of this neighborhood and renovated their homes and tried to preserve that. And I'm just a little bit worried about how much it will affect our neighborhood when so many homes can be 
torn down instead of renovated without any say from the neighborhood um, other than what's done at this hearing. So that's um, all I have to say, I think. Thank you. You did a great job. <laughs> Anyone else wishing to speak in opposition? Seeing none, uh, Councilman, ready for rebuttal? I want to thank my neighbors for coming in. They're both very active community members and very good stewards of our community, and I appreciate their input. One thing that maybe I didn't clarify, yeah, a lot of the renovations are new people coming in last three to four years renovating. And once again, having going from 80% rental to 75% home ownership in the last four to five years, um, unless the prices, you know, the demand gets higher, you know, the risk of having a connected duplex for someone to pay f to buy that house from you for what you owe. The average ho new homeowner owes about $275,000 um, in that area right now. And on average, to buy a house to put two connected restricted duplexes with restricted height at 275 and then paying them enough for them to buy another home, which home prices in Nashville, East Nashville, around $400,000. The likelihood is tough. Um, the people on Grace and Hancock wanted to do the dadus, and this is the only way I know how to get it. We had to cut through some of the dadu area to get the others that were left out, and that's why you may see some that were added on. Like you can see up there in North Second, there's a CL there that cuts some people out. And then when you go down towards Trutland, there are some people left out. But I had to cut through certain areas because the rule is it has to be continuous. Isn't that right, Mr. Sloan? Or continuous that everything has to kind of touch in a way, I think? Yeah, it has to be a contiguous area. Yeah. And so that's why there may be some folks that were added that are already in the SPR because I don't know how to do this without – because, you know, when I don't want to leave people out there that are wanting to do this. And the only way to really get them in here is kind of, you know, as, as, as terrible as it sounds, is kind of go back through some of the SPR and just, you know, and just get access to them. And the R6A is probably the most restrictive R6 we have, you know. And, you know, you know I mean, developers that email me hating, they're like, why don't you just take the A out? I'm like, it's not for you. It's for the citizens that are living there, you know. And so I'm kind of, you know, I'm asking for this just so that my people that were left out can be included. And this is the most restrictive I can get without, you know, you know I mean, I can't reappeal, re repeal the RS5 or add do the DADU overlay, you know, again. So my hands are tied here. So Thank you, Councilor. We'll declare the public hearing closed, and why don't we start with Commissioner Blackshear first. I have a question for staff. Is there um, a more narrowly tailored way to accomplish the councilman's goals? Of permitting detached accessory dwelling units but not duplexes, or...? Well, right, so I guess if his, and, and Councilman, maybe you can articulate your goals again. So are, is your point of doing this just to permit the dadus? That is the point of it. Majority of it is to prevent the dadus. Now, as we, the, is to add in the dadus to certain areas. You know, that is, that is, that is, the, that is the major goal of this. Now, I will be taking some areas off of, from North 2nd away from, from it, you know, at the, at the very top of North 2nd. When we get to 3rd, I'm looking at removing some if it could be contiguous. But that's the primary goal is to get to the dadus again because this is the only way I see for those that are left out, you know, to get the dadus. So could, could you get the dadus in without doing this large zone change or...? So R6A, uh, as opposed to the RS districts, R6A would permit single family, two family, and DADUs. DADUs are not permitted under the R6, and there's not a zoning district that would permit just a DADU. The, the R6 permit, permits DADUs, but it also, also does permit duplexes. Uh, it was achieved in a larger part of the area through the SP that Councilman Davis took through, which was to permit uses which are S5 plus detached accessory dwelling units. 
Uh, Lisa, could you show the zoning district map? Yes. Please. There are um, the areas uh, to the western side of this rezoning are already zoned SP that allows for single family homes and dadus. There are two areas on the eastern side that Lisa's indicating one to the northeast and one to the north south. Those are the only two areas right now that do not allow dadus. They're zoned single family only. And so for the entirety of the shaded area, um, one portion is only single family, one is single family and dadus. This would allow the entire area to have single family dadus plus duplexes. It seems, um, I'm definitely interested to hear what the other commissioners have to say. It seems um, like a fairly blunt instrument to try to get the dadus in because obviously you're allowing some other things to come in too. Um, and I, I would be interested to hear what the other commissioners have to say. Commissioner Diaz. Thank you. Um, I was actually wondering the same thing. Um, they made a good point about SPR are already allowing dad do so you know what is the why was there why is this you know proposed on all that area as well um, so I'm going to just sit and listen to everybody else before I make up my, my mind thank you Cancel it. can I get an explanation of what the a adds in residential areas Sure. In the A district, or in A districts within the UZO, it would require um, alley access um, for the units. When you say requires alley access for a duplex, or what does that mean? For all access for single family homes as all well. All access is for is from the alley. And so, does that necessarily prevent tall skinnies? The, the two family standards that were adopted some time ago would apply. So if you had um, detached duplexes, then the height to width ratio that was adopted by council would apply the one and a half to one height to width if they're detached and they have to be separated by a certain distance. And that would be there whether it's an A or not A. Is Correct, that that's statement? for all two family dwellings. Gotcha. So what the A adds is is simply a requirement for alley access. It requires, for alley access, it also has some requirements in regards to garages. Um, if there's a detached garage, it has to be located behind the rear of the primary structure. Um, you can't have a garage door that faces the street. Um, it also requires a minimum raised foundation of 18 to 36 inches for all residential units. Okay. So this seems to me to be significantly different from the SP that allows RS 7.5 to also have detached accessory dwelling units and, and more like just a, a, an R6, except that it's got the alley access. Correct. But nothing that specifically makes a difference with regard to what the duplexes might look like from plain vanilla R6. Right, the standards would apply for duplexes that are applied to all of the R districts in gotcha. regards to height and, gotcha. and that sort of thing, the and, separation. And it, I mean, it looks to me like um, there are two areas that because we're saving the open space, which seems like a great idea to me, then those two end up being totally disconnected from each other, but two separate bills could apply that in a more intentional way simply to those two RS6 areas that are currently not under the SP. Is that a true statement? Correct. This area here, yeah, RS5, and this area here, RS5, right? It would have to be two bills. They couldn't, it couldn't be one application because they do have to be contiguous for right. one application. Okay. Um, I mean, if, if I have understood what the goal is correctly, that seems like a more, yeah, uh, a more efficient and also more accurate way to do what, what the council member is trying to do. Um, you know, I, I agree with everything he says about the detached accessory dwelling unit overlay, and I hope to goodness we finally get that in some form that we can get the the public to support. But we're not there yet, so I, I, and I understand he's ready to forge on with something. Um, but I feel like his something could be more more targeted, perhaps um, in a and, and that that might need to be. I don't know if you can substitute two sub two bills for one, but or maybe just back up and 
start again, but that seems to be what my recommendation is. If that be. were what you were trying to accomplish, uh, what you could do is you could reduce this bill to just cover one of the right. areas and then file a second bill to pick up the, the other okay. portion. And there's a larger area on the, on the top, so that might be the one to start with. Commissioner Tibbs. Um, I really, that was good um, how you unpacked that. That was good, Councilman. Um, um, and I do um, sympathize with Councilman Davis. It seemed like he's really got a challenge. He's trying to wrestle through this. Um, and maybe the two approaches is the best way. I will say, first with the, um, the A, does it, uh, um, does it mean you have to update that, upgrade the alleys since you're requiring it? Is that part of the requirement? Is that a public works question? There are existing improved alleys throughout this area. Okay. Um, yeah, I guess that's, I guess that's the right question. I mean, I guess let me ask it this way. If you're developing, if you are uh, doing a new development, would you be required to upgrade the alley? Maybe that's the way I should ask it. If you're, you know, if you're doing a new development, uh, would you be required to upgrade your alley access or anything? Like that? Not for a single, uh, not for a single lot, no. And they are all improved and accepted for maintenance. Okay, I should I'm say. following you. Um, and I do know that DADUs have such a lot of requirements. You know, it's a lot of um, requirements to DADUs. So a lot of extra things come into it that I think will. Uh, are positive, and especially with the, it's, it's very specific, the DADU details. Um, I'm kind of following more of the Councilman Allen's kind of approach to it that I think I'd be in support of. Commissioner Hagan, do Are these so complicated? Oh, okay, so that was very helpful, um, Councilmember Allen. I, I'm struggling with this one again. I, it seems, like, just restating what else has said, it's a very blunt instrument. Um, it seems over-inclusive. Um, I'm unclear as to, I really am unclear as to why these RS5, back to your point on these two pieces, if we're taking out the open space, um, and we're, the only issue is that is why we would open that up to duplexes. And I'm anti, I, I'll tell you, I, I don't, I'm not in favor of that. I'm not in favor of, of, of putting in, of changing the zoning in this entire area to allow for, I, it changes the entire character of the neighborhood, as far as I, as far as I can tell. I was a former East Nashville resident who has, who no longer lives there, but has to deal with all my neighbors, my friends who do, who yell about the houses and the, the duplexes. I, I, I'm back to a conversation I've been having about the housing stock within our communities. I am concerned of single family, I mean, RS5 and another SP, with the DADU issue, I'm all full support of, but I, I can't I can't be in support of something so over inclusive at this point. Commissioner Farr. <laughs> Chairman. <laughs> Look, um, <laughs> punch me, Chairman. Just punch me in the arm, Chairman. I told you I had to leave at ten. I, <laughs> I thought you said six. Um, it, is R six A? Is that for accessory buildings or any? If, if I'm building a single-family home, and it's if there's an alley, then I have to have access from the alley and not from the front. I can't park in the street or park in the front yard. Is that correct? Okay. I think, Councilman, you were trying to raise your hand a while ago. Do you have a statement to make? Now, when you go up to North 2nd, several of those lots are below the, because um, if I'm, I'm not a builder, but if it's less than 6,000 square feet, they cannot do a two-family structure, correct? So if the majority of those lots are below 6,000 square feet, then they won't be able to do a um, two-family structure, correct? It's getting, yeah, that isn't that? Yeah. Let's get, and the, and let's get the staff to answer. Right. Yeah. When, you, when you're below 6,000 square feet? So in R6A or regular either, um, two family units, duplexes, 
are only permitted with conditions, and the first thing is that the lot has to be a minimum of 6,000 square feet. The same condition applies to dadus as well. So if it's under 6,000, you're limited to a single family. There's other conditions as well in regards to when the lot was created, when it was subdivided, et cetera, but the baseline initially is, does it meet the minimum standard of the zoning ordinance? Right. What, I'm, what I'm letting you know here is, I know it's difficult when you look at the map, but when you walk down those streets, and then you, when you see your lots that are smaller than 6,000 square feet, when you see, well, you got a duplex there that's already permitted in its existence, you know, the impact is, is less significant. And then when you get up further, you have a CL there, which does not allow for a dadu further up. Now, there's a way, we, we did it this way, you know, because, you know, I have a freebie every year, and I use my freebie for my citizens, and hopefully someday, maybe next year, maybe year after that, maybe we'll get the dadu overlay back again, you know, but there was a reason why I didn't plaster the whole area that was SPR back to R6A. You know, these streets were selected, you know, A, just to give people access, but also to be the least impactful. You know, now I am cutting down some of the North 2nd area because, you know, going back and remeasuring some of the lots, like, hey, that's over 6,000. I don't want that going, you know, something weird or wacky, you know, even with the A, but also the height restrictions with the, with the A and the width restrictions, even if you were to try to separate two structures, you'll have a, a short fat house with not that much square footage, which would not be attractive, you know, to sell. <laughs> You know, so the A does put a lot more restrictions. I know it's a relatively new concept, but I sat for two hours with Richard Thermopolis and kept showing him duplex photos and example. He drew a table for me that showed what was allowed and what would not be allowed. And, you know, I just asked for you to move this ahead. And, you know, it's a lot of, a lot of weirdness. And I probably realized that I got a lot of weird zoning in my district, you know, just with the cases you've heard today, so I'm just asking for approval. Thank you, Councilman, and uh, thank you, Chairman. I think I'm just used to the attorney sitting, all right? No, I good. feel bad. You finished, Mr. Chairman? All right. Um, <laughs> Far. So it's interesting, because I actually think uh, that the Chairman will remember that when I first moved here, we were building some houses right behind River Chase Apartments, and it's interesting. Back then, I thought, there's no way this neighborhood will ever turn. And, you know, 18 years later, here we are. Um, you know, there's been a significant investment over there with the Hope 6 project and with some of the new single family housing that's been built. Um, I'm all for diversity of housing choice as a way to create affordability, but I'm also really concerned about displacement. And I don't believe that this is a majority owner occupied neighborhood. Um, I think there's a lot of renters there. And I think if we go ahead with this, we're going to um, open the door for more gentrification. Um, and I'm just not comfortable going forward with that. I think we need to look very closely when we do these things at, at the potential impact on residents in the neighborhood, considering whether or not we have owner-occupied or rental. Um, and if it's majority rental, then I think that we need to think about what implications that can have on displacement. So um, that's my comment. Okay, thank you, Commissioner. Uh, any other discussion? And Doug has, uh, Mr. Director. Well, there was several conversations about different ways to approach uh, this rezoning. And um, one certainly is to actually move forward with the uh, uh, R6A um, rezoning, but actually reduce the area so that you're not um, having to step through the SP uh, zoned properties through this legislation and then come back with a second piece of legislation to pick up the other uh, area that's not contiguous to uh, the first piece of legislation that you might want to approve. The other suggestion that you might be able to do, but, but I, I think it's going to take a disapproval and then another bill to come back. Uh, e either option would take a second piece of legislation, the one I just mentioned, or the expansion of the SP. 
so the expansion of the SP gets you essentially the same thing that this is suggesting, but it doesn't allow duplexes. So you'd still have the ability to have dadus. Uh, you'd still have the same restrictions about access to the alleys. Um, I'm trying to think of the other, the other, but 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 all the other design elements would be there. Uh, but you wouldn't wouldn't provide for duplexes, um, and it would really just be expanding the footprint of the SP that was that's already in place there. So those are a couple of things that I think are responsive to what I heard the, the commissioner saying. Thank you, Mr. Director. Thank you, because that's exactly what I was at thinking while I asked, is could we amend SP? So is it, it's not an amendment to the current SP, it's just an expansion, so we had to come back with a second piece of legislation, another piece, disapproval of this, and come back with it. Would take a, it would take a different piece of legislation. Gotcha. You can't amend this legislation No, no that. it would be a mess, yeah, okay. All right, so you've heard the explanation from the director. <laughs> we will need a, a motion. I move that we disapprove. A second. And you heard the, I think the councilman's heard our intention as well to expand the SP. Do we, so, we, don't, we don't need to go forward with the recommendation, right? That, that just comes. We just, no, we don't need to, but just yeah. so the councilman knows, but uh, on record. Uh, but there's been a motion to disapprove. Is there a second? Second. Second. Any other discussion? All in favor of disapproval, say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Ayes have it, and it's disapproved. We are on item 26. Okay, this is item 26 on the agenda. This is a request to rezone from RS5, CN, CL, and IWD to RM20A. Staff recommendation is to disapprove. The current zoning is RS5, CN, commercial neighborhood, CL, commercial limited, and IWD. The policies um, are T4 urban mixed use neighborhood, and that applies to the purple area, as well as T4 uh, neighborhood maintenance. The T4 mixed-use neighborhood policy is intended to preserve, enhance, and create urban mixed-use neighborhoods with a development pattern that contains a variety of housing along with mixed-use, commercial, institutional, and even light industrial development. The neighborhood maintenance policy is intended to preserve the general character of existing urban residential neighborhoods. T4 neighborhood air maintenance areas will experience some change over time, primarily when buildings are expanded or replaced. When this occurs, efforts should be made to retain the existing character of the neighborhood. Uh, this request is not consistent with policy. Uh, while, R, while RM20A could be an appropriate zoning district in this policy, in this instance it is not. The policy offers guidance in reviewing a site's location in relation, in relation to corridors and centers when considering the appropriate zoning district. The T4 mixed-use neighborhood policy envisions properties to redevelop in a mixed-use pattern. Given the location of these properties, RM20A would only promote a residential pattern in this location. There is also a lack of an existing alley network for the amount of density allowed under the zoning district. Um, and then for the properties found in the neighborhood maintenance policy, which are outlined in red, um, it would be an inappropriate application of residential intensity, as those zonings are RS5, and it would be disruptive to the generally to the existing generally uh, one-story single-family character. As this request is inconsistent with policy, staff recommendation is to disapprove. Thank you. We'll declare the public hearing open, Councilman. As the applicant, I need I need your pointer. Okay, your pointer. Your pointer. Yeah. Oh, sorry. All right, order, order. Okay. Right. Sorry okay. about that, Council. Okay. There we go. Oh, I think this is the last time you'll see me up here tonight. But I'm going to point to you some weirdness, okay? All right, go up to, start with the last piece of land in this policy. Alex, go up, go up, go up top. Yeah. Uh, this is the mixed use neighborhood. Okay. Um, go up to the top. Go, 
right, the one, the last one I read, the one on, the one on Cher Cher Cherokee. Uh, I can't see the numbers. Yeah. Okay, and to, to the right of that, you see some RM20A, and there's some industrial on that street. Um, I know one thing. Someone that you're mentioning in the report, there is a lot of um, one-story um, RS5 there, but that's actually a two-story house that used to be a quadplex before my neighbors purchased that house um, um, in, 20, in 2015. Now, was it a legal quadplex? I don't know, Doug Sloan. But, um, but it's, a, it's obviously a bigger piece of land sandwiched right next to my RM 20A and my industrial area. Now, go back down to the, um, to the, to the CL. CL. Yeah. Right there, you got um, a roofing, you got a, you got a roofing company there. Um, she was in opposition, but she has left after talking to my, my constituents, and they'll be coming up there expressing their support. But I go back down to the CN, sir, and right there I have a um, market. I think there's a trailer park next door down there. And I don't know if there's multifamily there, but there's about five trailers in there. And I brought a video of some of a strange young man um, who I have no physical proof, but the police have been called several times. He's selling some sort of product out of those trailers. And he had, had a dog tied up in the back, and the dog was usually there most of the time in my neighborhoods to protect his stash. And there's no one in there that I'm trying to displace that's living there, that's not doing anything. He pays rent there, the uh, gentleman who sells the product. Uh, we had a nice, colorful exchange, you know. Um, and he found out I'm, I was not the cops, I was just some crazy guy in the neighborhood. That trailer park causes problems for that market, and it brings people out there in front of that market who are not the most desirable folks. And the owner of the market is here today. He is for the rezoning, you know, and, and, that, and that's the thing, too. You know, my landowners are here, they're for it. For some reason in this area, it used to be the county. So there's a lot of hodgepodge. I'll have five trailers here where you may think it's uh, an RS5, and then I'll have a market, then I'll have a commercial, then I'll have IWD. And, you know, it seem, may seem like a strange request, but I need that trailer park gone and the area cleaned up around there. And the property owners are here in support and I just ask you just to honor the wishes of my neighbors and let's, 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 let's push ahead. If you have to disapprove because of the policy reasons, I understand I'm not upset. But, you know, it is definitely a colorful corner and the zoning will be a lot better than what we're dealing with now over here. But I'll let my constituents tell you how they feel about it. Thank you, Councilman. You'll have uh, rebuttal time. Anyone here wishing to speak in support? Please come to the microphone and state your name and your address. Uh, hi, uh, Ryan Garson, 1522 Jones. Um, I actually have that dog now that he's talking about fostering him. Um, I've been broken into from uh, the result of the activity going in there. I bought the house in um, 1st of November and I was robbed, I think the second week. Um, so yeah, if we can get that trailer park out of there uh, that'd be in the best interest, I think, everybody around there. So uh, I'm in support of the rezoning, and uh, thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak in support? Hi, my name is Rachel Pfeiffer, and we live on uh, 1601 Jones Avenue. We're the ones who bought that house um, at the very top. And we bought it in May of last year. Um, we had lived in Stainback Avenue, which is um, in the Highland Heights area, for about five years. And we outgrew our house. It was only 900 square foot. So we're now having our second child. And so we were looking for a home, and we couldn't find anything in our price range. So we found this house, and it was kind of a miracle how we got it. Um, and we had to invest all of the proceeds from our previous house into this house. Um, we ran out of money, and so we don't have air conditioning in the house. We don't have, um, we need a new heater. We have a lot of things that we still need to finish, and um, we were told originally when we purchased that lot that we would be able to potentially um, to sell the back half off, 
um, or the, like the back of the lot. Well, the Nashville Next program came through and then we were told that we were now not able to sell the back of the lot off. So our request um, is that we would be able to rezone the property to sell the back of the lot off to be able to finish our innovations and have a livable home that we can raise our children in and stay in a neighborhood that we love. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak in support? Jason Keith, uh, 802 Cherokee. Um, am I allowed to ask questions? Well, you can, but make a statement and then okay. we'll, we'll, um, we'll get it. My in. original intention when I bought the lot was to, I have a lawn care business. I was going to use the IWD. Um, I realized that my business was growing faster than that lot would support. I basically just didn't want to outgrow something that to get into it. Since I've been there, um, basically, I, I just want to... I, I go down that lot, or I go down that area like every single day for like the last eight years. That area is rough. When I say rough, I mean rough, rough. That trailer park, if you even want to call it a trailer, I mean, it's a dump. I mean, the whole area around there is a dump. I would just like to see it improved, just the area itself. Rezoning that would certainly help it because I would like to be able to possibly build something or sell it uh, to someone who would like to build something to improve the area. I'm not about displacing anybody. In fact, that would be what I would be against. But I can tell you this, after going up and down that street for eight years and then having some friends that I go to church with by the, the, the house across the street, I can tell you that that area needs some cleaning up. And I know that rezoning would help that. I'm not about displacing anything. but. I, the, the question I would like to ask is, what would be the reason for wanting to disapprove? That would be my question. We'll get an answer. Okay. Thank you very much. Anyone else wishing to speak? Support. Yes, good evening. My name is Michael Williamson. I'm a property owner in that area, a lifelong member of that neighborhood since Give us your address. 62 address. years old. The address? Uh, of 1517 Jones, 1519 Jones, 701 A, B, and C, Chickasaw. Thank you. Yeah, and I, I grew up in that area, and I, it is a big change. I mean, it needs something done. I, I mean, I'm constantly harassed myself by what goes on there, and I have nothing to do with it. You know, I just rent rent the property. I'd like to see some type of change made there where we could, you know, draw some different people into that area, you know, other than what's there. And that trailer park, the way they're talking about, ever since, I've owned that property since 1992. He bought that trailer park and it's, it's been the same ever since he bought it. It's junkies in there. But I appreciate your help if you could approve. Thank you, sir. Anyone else wishing to speak in support? Anyone wishing to speak in opposition? Councilman, you want to finish it up and or we'll declare the public hearing closed? You can finish it up. I need this approved for many different reasons. Number one, I'll be able to help my, my neighbors on the corner up there be able to subdivide so they can have air conditioning for their new baby. Um, also, it'll be able to clean up a um, potential trailer park hazard, which we've all talked about um, needing to be removed. But the problem is, once again, you know, if the trailer park is the trailer park, you know, can be removed. I mean, there are people out there, and I hate to kind of say this, but you know, sometimes when you, sometimes when someone is getting cash rent off of five units. You know, the only way to kind of get them out of there is for someone to buy it to do something else with it. Well, no one's going to buy it if they can only build one home because it's RS5 and some other limitations on it. So it may seem like, you know, Scott, I get it, I understand, you know, but we can't approve of the policy. It's fine. You know, I'll just continue. I'll bring my fellow council members over there. I'm, you're more welcome to come preview the area during the day. You know, because I wouldn't want anybody to go look at the trailer park during the nighttime, you know, at all. But um, 
it needs improvement, and I don't expect you to agree with me. I just want you to understand why I'm pushing ahead for this policy. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. We'll declare the public hearing closed. How about we start with you, Mr. Chair? How about that? And then, you won't, then you won't forget me. Can't miss it, though. I miss you. Uh, one question. This uh, with the staff. Zoning changes this to multifamily, but is there any mixed use included in there? Mixed use included within this request? or Yeah, if they had, this entire area, if it's changed from the existing zoning now, which is kind of a WD, CL, CN, and RS5. Will it be any commercial, retail, or anything? Sure. There's some existing uh, zoning districts now, CL and CN, that allow for um, commercial uses. However, the policy, which is mixed-use neighborhood, um, for those properties envisions it to go to uh, a mixed-use pattern. But the, the proposed zone change does not allow for commercial. Correct. So okay. they might have... So it's just strictly multifamily. Right. Wouldn't this be, uh, uh, you know, there's nothing along Trinity Lane. I don't know anything back the other direction, but for a little anchor of, you know, walkable coffee shop or something, look like they want to include uh, multifamily along with, with some retail. But yeah, that, that what, would not be permitted under the RM. Yeah. Yeah. If they hadn't asked for it, I mean, that, that's, there must be some reason. I'd, I'm familiar with that area and have been for probably since the 80s, and it's just... It's a hodgepodge of just needs to be cleaned up. So I think that probably the start, the zoning that they're asking for would help. But I was wondering why they wouldn't have some mixed use on the, on the lower level. You know, just a coffee shop or something to kind of anchor that neighborhood and bring everybody together. So that's it. I'm finished. I'm going, going Thank home. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Call let me know how the vote goes. <laughs> you can't go home yet, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Hagany. Um, so the trailer park that we keep talking about, I'm trying to, it's on Jones, is it, can you show me, is it the, the big lot right here? Oh, okay. We were trying to figure out, it's Chickasaw in, in the corner of Chickasaw and Jones. Okay. And it's not it. It's the one on Jones. On up? Right. No? Okay. Okay. So basically the, this change would just allow, the, the the, the supposition is that it could stay this way, and, but that this would create an incentive for this property owner to then sell, which then can be developed into multifamily units. You, well, if you, you, it's just a statement. You don't have to answer that question. It's not really a question. It's a statement. Um, in terms of the homeowner who said that, well, based on the assumption you could sell off part of a lot and now Nashville next change that, I, I don't think that's an accurate statement and I can leave that to staff, that Nashville Next didn't change your property ownership, but go ahead. Um, and if I'm wrong, Mr. Sloan, please correct me, sir. I'm not. Um, before, and Nashville Next was a great document. The, the planning department worked extremely hard. Um, on that parcel up there, it was a neighborhood evolving at one time, and since it was over um, a certain number of square footage, because that's uh, over a half acre lot, it's like 0.65, um, I'm thinking, and originally before Nashville Next, it could have been subdivided. You know, now it cannot be subdivided because it says maintenance. It doesn't because there's new set, there were there was new setback rules too, along with some Nashville Next, because it, it it was an evolving area, and then it became a maintenance area. That part up there. So there's so it's everybody's right and wrong with that. You know, so there were some significant changes you know, with that policy right there. I'm willing to add some mixed use in there, but it's kind of difficult, you know, because you got one application, and I knew with the RM20A, just use, you know, I, that trailer park is going to be gone, <laughs> you know. But um, I'm open to some mixed use there, but my, my primary goal is, number one, help my constituents, and number two, get rid of that trailer park. And I know... You know, with the blessings of my of my members of the council and with the great staff here, you know, if I have to get 27, I understand if you have to go against it. Thank you. Please, I am not mad. Thank you. Okay? Commissioner. Did you have anything to add, please? Yes. 
Did y'all understand what he was saying as far as the policy changes during National Next? And then the changes to the subdivision regulations that added lot compatibility requirements back in. So if this was, in fact, neighborhood evolving before National Next and then changed to neighborhood maintenance, because the subdivision regulations now tie subdivisions to policy, in neighborhood maintenance areas, they would be required to be compatible as far as lot size and lot frontage with the lots that surround them. And in neighborhood evolving areas, you would not have the same compatibility requirements. You would just have to meet base zoning. But we don't know if this was neighborhood evolving before and now changed to neighborhood maintenance. Okay. Okay, I was just trying to nail down that legal. That's a legal I appreciate distinction that, because, that I think is, needs to be made. Right, and, and I think it's important to understand what Nashville Next did. You know, Nashville Next may have changed the policy. Does it but, take away but property it, rights? No, it didn't take away anybody's property rights. Okay. Uh, now. The subdivision regulations, uh, the way that they allowed you to subdivide properties based on those policies, that may have changed your ability to subdivide it. Uh, it but Nashville Next it did not did not do that. Okay, just want to make that clear. We've had a lot of confusion sometimes. Okay, and and but by going from, so can someone show me the zoning map? The I'd like to see what. Okay. So right now, 76 and 175, they're, what are they? R Those are RS5. They're RS5, okay. And they would go to RM20A? Is what's being requested. That's what's being requested, which would allow for multifamily, provided the lot's large enough. Correct, 20 units an acre. Okay. All right, I'm going to think and listen. It seems like the biggest emphasis really is like what uh, um, um, a legal way, I guess, to say it for, for the um, to get rid of that trailer park. Um, and this that does seem like a good strategy. And but then uh, looking all out, I can't see a lot that um, um, why well, would would be opposed to it, disapprove. Could um, but I do see you know it's just because that area is not set up for it right now. Um, I think I'm just going to listen a little bit more to understand uh, a little bit more about what people are thinking. But it, the, yeah, I'm going to I'm going to listen a little bit more. Council Anyo. I'm writing down questions before I forget them. Um, okay, first of all, would RM20A allow subdivision of lot 76? It could, but it would also allow, if, if the property is 0.65 acres, um, just that one parcel, it would allow around 13 units. But if you're trying to stay in your home and sell half the lot, could you do that? I think it could, but there are a variety of things right. that RM20A would allow. One, one of which would be hanging onto the lot and selling the back half and letting them put lots of things there. Would subdivision requirements still apply? Would the subdivision requirements no longer apply? The compatibility requirements only apply when you're zoned R and RS. Not RM. Okay. Um, all right, that's useful to know. Is is the trailer park currently a legal non-conforming use? I mean, that's not MHP, so why? Right, it is. I mean, the, tr the only way you can do a trailer park now is with MHP, mobile home park zoning. Right. So, and there is no mobile home park zoning that I'm aware of that has been approved. So, right. since 98, so I, there, this would have to be non-conforming. Right, assuming that legally non-conforming was my question. Uh, aware of its existence and they weren't before they are now. I mean, my my question is, it, it, it's clearly not conforming, mm -hmm. and I don't know how long it's been there. I mean, is it possible just to say this is the wrong use for this zoning and you can't be here? No, uh, assuming that that they were there, that that it was a legal use at some point, mm -hmm. uh, then no, uh, the state law would prohibit us from. Gotcha. From how that how zone. far back do you have, we have to go to see when it would have been a legal use? I mean, you have to go all the way back to Comzo probably and see if it was approved back then as a at least Comzo maybe before that. Right. Uh, 
cut, cut well, yeah, before you, you'd go back and look at the permits and when they were originally pulled mm -hmm. and, and look at the zoning at the time but you, you don't have to go all that far back in our history for zoning to get really general right okay. uh, <laughs> that that seems like a, a useful question I mean to me there are some questions that I mean the, the primary issues are clean the area up get rid of the trailer park and allow some additional use of lot 76 that, that benefits the current owners and is is this the the only way to do it is it the best way to do it is it a fine way to do it I'm, I'm still trying to get my arms around that and then the next question would be um, this is very interesting it's IWD and it was neighborhood maintenance and so but mixed use and, and maybe I need to see the policy map so I can understand where those divisions are okay so purple is what Purple is the urban mixed-use neighborhood, and then the tan is the uh, neighborhood maintenance. Is the neighborhood maintenance. Uh -huh. So the one lot is in neighborhood maintenance that, if it were in the mixed-use, could be subdivided. Great. Okay. Um, all right. That answers all my questions, but still doesn't let me know what I think I'm going to support. So I'm going to listen for a minute. Commissioner Diaz. Okay. Um, I'm on the same boat. I think that there are it, I, the concept and the goal that this rezoning is trying to achieve um, with that 100%, but I think that there are ways to be able to achieve that with um, that will coordinate well with the policy, with the existing policy, especially given that this is an area that will be, that is mixed use neighborhood. And I think that RM40 might be, um, won't be as successful as something else that might, you know, like the policy re is requesting more mixed use and more active area. Um, I'm still struggling with how the areas, the lots that are in neighborhood maintenance will all combine well. Um, so I'm, I'm not really sure with this one. I think there are ways to get there, but you know, maybe something that a, a district that fits well within those two policies. I don't know if that even exists, but um, I think there's a possible way to get there, but I don't know what that is. Commissioner Blackshear. Um, just to follow up on what Commissioner Diaz said and, and really to address your question about why we would disapprove this if the goal is obviously to remove a blight from the neighborhood and to help the neighbors with their properties. We're constrained by policy. We could not approve something that was contrary to policy. So our job is either one to figure out why despite the fact that it seems to clearly violate policy, it doesn't violate the policy or to figure out a way to achieve the neighborhood's goals within the confines of the policy. And so I think from listening to the discussion so far, I think that this does not um, fit within the parameters of the policy, but there are ways perhaps if we all think creatively and with obviously expertise from staff, um, figure out a way that we can achieve the goals, but still do it so that it comports with policy. I don't think I have much new to add. I think everyone's done a pretty good job covering it. I mean, I think that um, it, it kind of clicked in my head a little while ago that the real reason for going for RM20 was the economic incentive to get the, the trailer park out. And while I totally am sympathetic to that, that is not, that's not what we base our planning off of. <laughs> Um, and I also think that in reality, to make this a neighborhood that you want to raise your kids in, you don't want to end up with a massive multifamily structure right down the street from your house. Um, and so I feel like there's, I, I don't know how to hit the economic incentive piece, that's tricky. Um, but I feel like there could be other ways of possibly addressing the issue with the, um, with the trailer park that would also, as has been stated earlier, better fit within the neighborhood and really make it more of a neighborhood where you guys want to live. Um, and I would say the same with your with the lot as well. I mean, again, it's 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 a very challenging situation to find out that your expectations are have changed as a result of 
the planning process, um, and, it, and it has economic implications for a single property owner. Um, I'm certainly sympathetic to that, but again, it can't be the basis for a planning de decision on the entire block. So um, I think I, under you know, I understand where staff was coming from. Have we had conversations with Councilman Davis about alternatives? We have. Um, I would say one of the conversations was trying to find a way to remove the properties that were neighborhood maintenance from RM28 as they were pretty um, not consistent with the policy, obviously. Right. But we also don't want to just do one lot that's RM20 because that would be incorrect. Well, <laughs> Councilman, hold on one second. We're, I'm going to let um, the director speak for a second, and then I think we might have some potential options. Well, and, and listening to everything y'all are saying, these are the same things that our staff, you know, talked about with a lot of these issues. And I am very familiar with this area, actually, as you know, that uh, used to be at the legal department and there were nuisance complaints over here, the uh, gambling and drug dealing in the area. And so there are, there are remedies that we've used in the past uh, to build nuisance complaints, uh, build nuisance cases against these, some of these establishments that were right here. Um, so I, I, I know the, the councilman's uh, struggle with trying to, to clean that area up. Uh, and it's not anything new. I mean, that was over a decade ago. Uh, but I think that the, one of the biggest concerns that we have and that the commissioners have been voicing is how to uh, step those uses down so that they're more sensitive to the established housing stock that's there. Uh, but yet still achieve uh, in, um, getting the entitlements on the property to encourage the redevelopment of that area, right? The, that's, the, that's the balance. And the former chairman said it at the very beginning of this conversation and that this place is more appropriate for mixed-use development. Uh, and the policy speaks to that as well. Uh, and so whether it is not using the entire uh, area that's been uh, identified as in one ubiquitous uh, zoning type, but something a little more nuanced, uh, or it is our all favorite SP uh, that also helps us to get that balance. Uh, I think that that's the, the, the staff, that that's something that we would want to see to try achieved. Now, having said that, I do want to also point out this commission has another challenge that it has to meet, and that is you can't approve anything if it doesn't meet the policy. You and, and if you and if you approve something, you have to say how it meets the policy. And I think as presented to you, that that could be relatively difficult with just a straight RM rezoning. So, so um, Councilman, did you want to say say something before we? end our deliberation. Alex and several of the staff did try to work something out. You know, they I commend them. And, but it puts me, once again, I know you can't improve anything without a policy, without it fitting the policy, and I get it. And once again, I've said it again, I understand, not angry, you know. You know, but as long as you understand, you know, and you've, all of you point out the need of the trailer, getting rid of the trailer park, but also helping my constituents there. Uh, one of the things when looking at it and having a sur survey, th this may seem a little reckless, but once again, they're new homeowners. They're not going to be building an apartment complex on that lot, you know. And also the small area that they're going to be subdividing off is not going to be large enough for a multifamily also. So we did take into account that also, you know. But at the same time, though, you know, separating and doing a bunch of different policy plans is maybe the better, the, the, the best way to do everything overall. But these are my regular citizens. They don't have the money like a Roy Dale would have, you know, or a Steve Regal would have. And so I'm okay with your decision. Okay. I really am. And I'm just going to be lobbying my council members and bringing out my community and support for public hearing. And that's all I know how to do because I got to help my constituents. I just, I just want you to don't agree with me. I get it. You can't agree to me, agree with me by law. 
but understand, I respect your decision, but I have the answer to the people, and I gotta get rid of that trailer park. Thank you, Councilman. Is there, we need a motion. I'm gonna make a motion to defer, give a chance to come back with the staff and try to work out something that fits the policy. Do we already have legislation that's been filed? Nothing's been filed yet? Okay. So that's a proper motion. There's a second. Any other discussion? Do you mind just really quick? So def could you explain the de deferral real fast for me? Yeah. De well, we want direction of how long the deferral is. And then what we would do is take that time to meet with Councilman Davis. I know it surprises y'all, but we actually meet with him quite a bit. Uh, and have the opportunity to sit down and try to come up with maybe a, a more nuanced plan that we think that we could support that would still achieve what he's trying to achieve. And I, and I understand what he's saying too. We do need to try to be sensitive to the fact that we don't want to come up with a policy that requires you assembling all of these lots to be able to do anything with. And so, uh, but I think there, I think there's opportunities that we can come up with that are, as I keep saying, is are more nuanced, uh, but is respectful of, of the housing stock that we have and still, uh, increase the uh, entitlements to the property right along Jones and hopefully uh, encourage that redevelopment. Okay, thanks. Ms. My motion then would be to um, defer to the uh, July 28th um, commission you. meeting and keep the public hearing closed. So you've heard the motion, second, any other discussion? Councilman, would that be okay with you? Uh, there may be a time limit issue. Um, there may, there may be, there may be, a, there, may, there may be a time limit issue. And once again, as humbly as I can, you know, present to you, um, you know, I was after. I mean, I was expecting a disapproval today, and I was going to request the bill tomorrow, so I can um, bring it towards the public hearing. You know, it, can I still keep it on track and bring it back to planning? Before I think you could, we could, if you defer it one more meeting the, to the 14th, then that, and then you requested the bill tomorrow, that that would still keep you on track. If okay. it goes two meetings, then I think it, it does. Because I know that there's some time limits on for them to get some stuff done on that, on that lot for the subdivide. And I don't want to, you know, hinder that. So... I'm going, I'm going to ask, I want to request the bill from Rosie um, tomorrow morning, you know, to keep it on its current course. Councilor, well, I think the chairman wants to make a new motion. Yeah, I withdraw the original motion and um, make the motion that we defer until the July 14th meeting, uh, give a chance to meet with staff and that the public hearing remain closed. You've heard the motion and the second to, so it's a one meeting deferral. Can I ask a question? Yes, Commissioner. A, a scenario of what? If all of that land became RM20 and was sold to one property owner and they put in a multifamily complex, what that would look like and the number of units, because I think it would be really important for the surrounding neighborhood to see what they might end up with. Yes, we will put that in the report, at least. Because that could be a lot of or, units. <laughs> Can we do that now? Or not in the report, but at least have uh, the information. Yes, we, we can absolutely give you the calculations yeah. about what, I mean, num the number of units that that would produce. And I'd, I mean, I think that'd be useful for the, con the neighbors to see. Yes. Any other discussion? So we have a proper motion, proper second. All in favor of deferring one meeting staff? Aye. Opposed, no. Ayes have it. Motion is deferred. We're on item 27. Historic, Mr. Tibbs. No report at this time. Nothing? Nothing? Oh, okay. Parks. Plan to play. Nashville strategic plan is well underway for parks. So if you haven't taken the survey, you can go to the parks website and it's on the main. So I urge you guys to do that, the commissioners and all of the public, and maybe even the staff, if you, you want to comment on our own park system, you guys are the experts. So. 
Um, executive committee report. We don't have anything, I don't think. Uh, 30, I know that we approved it, but Mr. Sloan, would you like to add to your director's report or report? Yes, thank you. Um, Nat, I mean, uh, Music Row, uh, don't we have another community meeting? Monday night. Monday night. Uh, is, okay. I'm sorry? Midtown Hills Police what Precinct. What time? Probably set six. Okay, six o'clock. Uh, this has been a year in the making. Uh, as this body recalls, uh, y'all made a very clear uh, statement that you weren't going to look favorably on any rezonings until we figured out a comprehensive plan about how to how to preserve the cultural heritage that we have in Music uh, Row and at the same time uh, try to continue to encourage the industry to, go, to grow there. And so we think we have a plan that we want to take to the community, um, not just the community on Music Row because it, it really is important to the entire county uh, and, and hopefully present it. So, so we, we want lots of folks to come out. We hope to have people from the industry come out and the people who own the property there, people from Edge Hill, Midtown, uh, Belmont, Vanderbilt, uh, all of those areas that are most directly affected. But then again, as I said, it, it, it's a cultural asset to the entire city. But we think we have a good plan that will both protect a lot of the National Register, National Register eligible uh, properties there, and then also still facilitate the growth of the music industry, uh, which we've been very pleased to see is a very healthy on Music Row. I was very surprised at how many industry uh, businesses are still there. So, Thank you, Mr. Director. Uh, legislative reports. Council. Thank you. I just will report that the uh, capital improvement budget has passed and the uh, new operating budget has passed with four new positions for planning. And I uh, understand y'all are underway getting those. Yeah. Um, and also that we passed the new fee structure um, for uh, development stuff, so that one's that one's passed as well. So we've gotten a lot of things done. On the fee, on the fee structure, I do want to point out that that y'all reduced the fee struck the, the fees during the recession to try and help encourage development. This came up during Seems the council worked. asked questions about that, <laughs> and that now that we're doing much better, uh, we've moved the fee structure, we, the fees back up so that they're more uh, commensurate with the costs of supplying those services to and services to developers. I'm not sure the developers see what we do as services, uh, but but making sure that uh, we help shepherd them through the process. And also so. provided some tiered uh, fee structures for SPs, which I think is a great idea. That's correct. Chairman. The purpose of lowering the fees was to encourage uh, development and construction, right? Right. We didn't want and, and the it fees worked. to... I just wanted to say that it worked. <laughs> <laughs> right. Somebody said, hey, you know, you can put the brakes on a little bit. All right. Anything else for the body? Is there a motion to adjourn? I think... No, that's not adjourn. I don't <laughs>